<laughs> Welcome, beachgoers, to Tales from the Lakeside. We are Table Quests, and we are delighted to present A5E, Advanced 5th Edition, from EN Publishing. Shout out to Roll20, the VTT we're going to be using for our dice rolls and etc. tonight. This is Session 1, the perfect place to start. Today we have Kendra playing Vidanya. And Kendra, please, would you give us the full name of your of your character? Uh, yes, my name is Vidanya Benhirfir Elfe Bajalinia. Vidanya for short suffices, though? Just, yeah, Vod. Vod, Vod. Noted, thank you. You mortal tongues, it's fine. <laughs> oh, for us of the, the thick and stupid tongue. Uh, we have River playing Pearl. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Uh, and uh, Joel, we have playing uh, someone who goes by Cathar. And now, Joel, do you do you have an extended name that you want to share with the rest of the class? I I do. I have a different name that is uh, at least as uh, long as <coughs> that's. <laughs> did you Alrighty. want me to share it? You don't have to if you don't want to. That's okay. Oh, no, I just it's wanted to fine. give you space uh, to do so. Kitharch! But Kitharch is a fight. That's all. But but Kithar will do? I will <laughs> respond to it. Thank you. <laughs> <All of that. laughs> Uh, our dear Ben, unfortunately, uh, has been waylaid with some real-life entanglements this evening and won't be able to join us. But when he does, he'll be playing a character by the name of Dirk. Uh, and then there's me, Kyle, who will be playing everyone else. Uh, we open up on uh, Vad, uh, sitting in a wagon as it rumbles along. Uh, she's been on this wagon for a couple of hours now, and Vod, you are sitting in uh, this wagon that you have taken to, to take to Puddle Town, which you're, you're headed to for your for your reasons. You've been rumbling along for a little while, and how about you give us a little description of, of Vod? Yeah, you see a elf, specifically a high elf, because you can definitely tell the difference. Okay, there's very distinct, you know, difference the air about them um they have long flowing white hair beautiful and silky um they kind of are dressed and in sort of an eclectic manner with lots of like bits and bobs and their ears are completely adorned um they have the um, pouches on them and things like that and they're probably currently reading a book and just engrossed it. Hmm. As uh, as you're engrossed in your book, uh, trundling along, the panel at the front of the wagon <clears throat> slides open, and you hear your your coach driver. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, you know, you know much about uh, this place we're going. Uh, this this old puddle town. I've heard. Oh, some things here and there. What can you tell me about good old Puddle Town? Oh, I'm I'm delighted that you asked. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Puddle Town is a is a town that has two faces, and they change with the seasons. During the hot season around these parts, it's shiny and glowing, clean and clear. Music floats through the warm air, mingling with scents from the Green Swan Inn beckoning you for entertainment and delight for an evening. Skills on display that dazzle the mind as well as the eye. And is it lively? Ha ha ha! Crowds of people, swarms of people, an endless river of people flowing over and through that little town. Sensible, safe revelry, and everyone goes home happy. However, like I said, Puddle Town has a second face. When the hot season runs out, when the face of warmth turns away, its second face is revealed. During the cold and wet season, gone are the crowds, the music, the smells, replaced with a forceful quiet, a vengeful quiet. 
descending as though in retribution for having such noise a few weeks before. Empty streets, shopkeeps that open up more out of habit than anything, and then when they open up at all, it's for a couple of hours at most. The Green Swan Inn is still inhabited, sure, but not by bright-eyed families and courting lovers. No, indeed. It's half filled with locals who really could be doing something, <laughs> anything else, and half filled with drifters <clears throat> like yourself. The fish stop biting, the band stop playing, and those skilled entertainers retreat back to their encampment, preparing to slink back away to wherever it is they go when the crowds dry up. Yes, Fuddle Town is one of the great jewels of the world when the time is right. Fascinating. But I noticed in that little welcome speech, I didn't hear anything about the lake monster. <laughs> the lake monster. Some yeah. say it's real, some say it's fake. I myself don't spend much time in the town, mostly back and forth bringing people. Not so often this time of year, but the, uh, the, uh, well, <sighs> The tourists seem to think it's real. Why'd you ask? Do you have interest? Well, <clears throat> I just find it so fascinating that such a creature with such lore has no real evidence of ex existence. And I'm quite curious to find out why, what really lives there. That's a, that's a very good question. You you've you've got an interesting line of inquiry. Now, I'm sure that the the gift shop at the at the pier can can sell you all sorts of photogra photographs of the of the lake monster. Yes, yes. What I'm looking for is a little bit more substantial. I'm looking for the monster itself, if it exists. Oh, oh! You'll want to you'll want to be taking the lake monster tour then. Uh, stop in at the Green Swan Inn. That's where you'll probably be lodging if you haven't arranged before, and and purchase a a ride on the tour. It's half price in the off season. Right, a lake monster tour. That is exactly what I'm looking for. And as she's saying that, she's already opening her book and like kind of dismissing him and just like <laughs> flipping through the pages. Done with the conversation. As you, as you, you clearly just decide, I'm not in conversation with this person anymore, and start to go back. You hear a, a buzzing uh, as uh, something kind of flies into the window, uh, and as you look at it, it's a it's a fat horsefly that has oh. kind of come through the window and begins to kind of bump around the wagon uh, with you. And I the... try to ignore it as long as I can. Oh yeah, you, it it doesn't really get near you. Uh, maybe adventures, sort of, but it's fine. And the the coach driver, being a consummate professional, understands when they've been dismissed and kind of shuffles back around to to keep their eyes on the road. As uh, Vad gets back into reading her book, um, a thick, sticky, wet, pink. Thing skyrockets out from under her seat between her legs and snatches that fat juicy fly off of the wall and pulls it back under the seat and she hears a very audible crunch from underneath her chair I immediately jump into my chair taking <clears throat> my book as a weapon and I'm like okay show yourself Oh, just what a lizard needs after a long nap. <sighs> and I start to crawl out on all fours, um, fat, thick, sticky fingers grabbing onto the floor, and then up the ceiling and plopping myself down in the seat across from her uh, and leaning sideways. Uh, Cathar is perhaps four and a half feet tall and weighs a hundred pounds soaking wet if he's wearing a cloak um his skin is sort of mottled shades of blue and green and purple and a little bit of yellow here and there and he's got two horns 
coming out from the front of his face, eyes on either side of his head, rotate around, examining the area, and then both of them turn and focus on Vad. And a big, toothy, sharp-toothed smile spreads across his face. I know you! And I know you. Huh. What brings you to... Uh, where is it we're going again? The Puddle Village Town place. Puddle Town, yes, that's right. Um, <coughs> how long have you actually been down? You've been down there this whole time. Just uh, It seemed a good place tired. to take a nap, and I was tired, and uh, nobody else was here in the carriage at the time. I don't see... It's nice and dark and quiet. Fascinating. And you see that she takes out like another book from her bags and opens it up and starts writing down. The creature seems to have no common manners. Hmm. And she shuts it and puts it back in her Does bag. Does she speak out loud as she yeah, writes? Yeah, she's like <laughs> annotating this out loud as she writes it. <clears throat> I assure you that my Nana taught me all of the common manners, at least among people who know how to treat others well and not speak badly about them to their face. Yes, well, you see, introductions usually don't start so gross. I, Forgive my speech. I, I'm not sure what you mean. I didn't introduce myself to you. We already know each other. Well, when you're... You know, walk, when you walk into a room, right? Do you walk in tongue first, or do you walk on two legs, four legs? It depends on the circumstances. She takes out her notebook and starts noting everything you say. Fascinating. Well, it's very lovely to see you. You hear it's quite a strange coincidence. Um. Yes. Um. Yeah. You know, I'm. Yes, there's lots of stories of wealth to be had somewhere on this great lake, and I didn't have anywhere else to go, so this seemed uh, a good enough destination for for now. I'm not running from anyone or anything, if that's what you were thinking. I, I don't know why you would why you would think that was the case. Uh, Insight check. <laughs> Why would you even suggest that that is something that would be the case? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, take an insight check. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Twenty one. Uh, well, uh, Kassar, are mm. you, are, I have, I have two questions for you. Mm. One, are you running from someone that you're aware of? And two, are you trying to actually hide it? Well, just between you and me, narrator, <laughs> I may have come in possession of some materials that didn't initially belong to me uh, but they do now uh, and and that is that to your second point I would like to use a unique ability in the advanced 5e system for my particular build called ingenious double talk it is based on my need for chaos and says that Undaunted by momentary setbacks, you twist conversations in any direction with an inspired turn of phrase and confusing double talk that plays off bold lies and impertinent proposals as jokes, obfuscates, or redirects accidentally slipped information, or quells outrage with diffusing flattery. Whenever you or a friendly creature you can hear fails a deception or persuasion check, you can use your reaction to spend an inspiration 
and undo any consequences of that failed check. Do I have an inspiration to use? Another two things. One, not quite yet. Um, there are very specific ways that you can bank inspiration related to your, your need for chaos. But also, the good news is that not only do you currently happen to lack the the startup cost for this ability, yes. you haven't yet failed your deception check. Ah, that is a fair point. I should make that roll. That's why I ask. It doesn't seem to want to roll. Did it pop up uh, a dialogue separately that's asking you what ability score? Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Oh, well, in that case, I do seem to be a bit nervous about my sack of possessions, and I, as I suggest to you that I don't understand why you would suggest to me that I might be running from someone, I very surreptitiously, with my long prehensile tail, <coughs> pull my sack out from under your seat, and stash it next to me with a big sheepish grin. <coughs> yes, Vod, you do get the idea that, that the thing that they said is exactly the opposite of true. Um, <coughs> well, I'm here to look into this creature that they claim is real. Um, and as long as you're and I'll just kind of, like, look at the bag and look back <clears throat> to you. Um, as long as... You know what? I didn't see anything. There's nothing to see. Of course not. Yeah. No. So what brings you to Puddle Town besides on the run? Is there... It's just random. I'm not running from anyone. Oh, Why sorry, sorry. Why do you keep sorry. bringing up this subject? <laughs> I seeing. Are you here? don't understand. Looking for, um, wealth that is not currently under anyone else's control. Okay. I, I've got a number of brothers and sisters at home that Nana is looking after and they they need help. <coughs> oh, how many? Can I pull out my notebook? <laughs> 43 at last count. 40. Wow. Oh, <clears throat> it's incredible. It's a okay. moderately sized village. That's moderate. Oh, wow. What is... Fascinating. What, after Puddle Town, maybe I could help you... <clears throat> I could... I don't know, help you escort you the goods to the year back to your home, maybe, and... I would love to introduce you to Nana and my brothers and sisters and cousins and nieces and nephews and uncles and aunties. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> and as you, you talk around in circles for a while, uh, Vad uh, accuses Cathar of being on the run from someone a couple more times, <laughs> and eventually, yeah, sure. eventually you sense that the wagon... <clears throat> is slowing and rumbles to a stop uh, and there's the thump thump of uh, of the coach driver knocking on it and the, the panel slides open again just, well it looks like uh, well there's we're, we're here uh, last last stop end of the line welcome to puddle town let me be the first to tell you um thank you I'll just pick up my things and look to Cathar. I'm headed to the end. Um, see you around, or I assume there's only one end, so I don't want to have one of those situations where I say bye and you say bye and we walk into the same direction, so I'm not going to say bye. 
I'm just gonna walk that way now. I <laughs> just start walking towards <laughs> the town. Um. Uh, nope. All, don't see if I. All right then. <clears throat> uh, Cathar hops down and uh, dusts himself off and starts walking in the same direction. Um, and after a second, he picks up his pace so that he passes bad and then like shifts to be in front of her and then slows down again and then turns invisible and stops and like curls up in a ball at like trip height <clears throat> yes okay <laughs> to yes i <laughs> Bod, give me a give me a perception roll, pretty please, would you? Okay. <laughs> Twenty-one. An eight. Yeah. Uh, you need me so, to roll stealth with advantage. Yeah, roll roll okay. stealth with advantage. <clears throat> There's roll one. Okay. Roll one already beats it. That's a natural four. Just... <laughs> for, for those keeping score at home. <laughs> uh, I imagine that, Vad, you, when you stepped out of the, the wagon, you kind of looked around and you saw that, strangely, the wagon is still maybe 100 feet from the, the wooden archway that represents the entryway of town. Uh, and without really taking in much more in the way of details there, you pulled out your book and started to walk in that direction as you, you tried to find your place again. Uh, not noticing Cathar kind of hurry up ahead of you and then get ahead of you and disappear. Uh, and Vad, as you're walking, give me a dexterity saving throw uh, as you're taken out at, like, knee height. Great. <clears throat> Fifteen. Uh, you, you walk into something. You're not entirely sure what, and, and stumble, but you're able to kind of reflexively lift up your other leg a little higher and step over and kind of stumble uh, to a to a stop. Once I catch my bearings, I immediately turn around and like study the area that I tripped over. So hold on, hold on. As soon as you walked past me, I dropped my invisibility and I'm lying sprawled in the street, like with my tongue oh hanging my out. Oh my god! <laughs> <clears throat> oh, what hit me? Did you I, just walk on me? I look around to see if anybody's watching this. <laughs> uh, you you notice that you, you, you've only made it about 20-ish feet. You're still fairly far off from the front gate. Uh, but you can see that there are three figures off standing <clears throat> at that front gate. And two of them have turned to, to look at you. One of them is kind of medium-sized, and the other is actually quite large. Uh, I just smile and wave like... Haha, <laughs> everything's fine. Don't worry about it. As I lean over to Cathar and like kind of grab him by like um, oh, your cloak. Oh, what oh, game oh. are you playing at? I'm not playing at any game. I was on my way toward the inn, and you just piled right over me with your nose in your book. <clears throat> my neck. Ah. Ah. All right, lizard man. Come with me, and I just kind of like, if you'll let me, I'll just kind of drag you behind me. I think there's a hole in my cloak now. Oh gosh, and I just brush off your cloak as we walk, and I put my arm around you, and just smile like <clears throat> pretending like we're friends. It's all right, I will pay for your dry cleaning. I say with like a shit-eating grin. Oh, that won't be necessary. No, I insist. Uh, I'll just... You can just give me a place in your room for the night. I'm sure we'll be fine. Absolutely <clears throat> not. I will be paying for your dry cleaning. I, I don't like my clothes dry cleaned. I have allergies. Oh my gosh, 
Okay, this was the wrong choice. I should have went to the other town and researched uh, I, the sky monster. You instead should of the perhaps monster. not walk around with your face in a book, and you won't step on people. <clears throat> At this point, you've made some more forward motion, uh, and you're you're getting kind of within fifteen or twenty feet or so of this this wooden uh, archway, uh, and you can you can make out the three figures. Uh, one, it looks to be uh, a human uh, who's standing there in a poncho, uh, kind of standing with his arms crossed, looking straight ahead at. <clears throat> the two figures that are opposite him, uh, one of which is a... Uh, well, you you both have seen before and, and know a little bit about uh, rock trolls. Uh, and one of them is a rock troll who is standing there in his largeness, uh, looking for all intents, much like a rock. And the other is a bone-white skeleton standing there with its arm stretched straight out with a scroll sticking out of its of its fist hanging down <clears throat> and as you as you approach the the person the, the human in the poncho looks over at you and says would you would you please just tell would you just tell them that I can't let them into the town unaccompanied <clears throat> I don't care what the scroll says help me out here please what Christ. do we know about rock trolls? They are generally uh, common. Rock trolls are <clears throat> pretty much categorized as natural disasters, more okay. or less. Uh, the fact okay. that this one is kind of standing there does seem unusual to you. What do we know about animated undead forms? You're familiar with <clears throat> the ideas of necromancy. Uh, and the ability to to give animate life back to corpses and the like, but I, without a role, I don't know that either of you have been in the presence of any before. I mean, are the stories positive? Uh, generally not. No, it's okay. always a story of. Okay. And then the army of skeletons okay. siege the castle, and not needing to partake of supply, the siege was unbroken, and they broke the walls. Okay. And and that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. That's all. That's all the questions I had, Bob. No. <clears throat> the figure wearing the poncho looks up. At least it, at least it, let off raining for a little while. Would you? Are you? Are you coming to town? Are you? Who, who are you? Both of you. Yes. Um, I am Vardania Benyaha Alife Brazilinia. Um, and this is. Yeah. Currently under the care of. Vod, the high elf who steps on well, people. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say under the care. We never arranged <clears throat> those details, but um, how can I help you, sir? We the, just want to be about it. But the skeleton, the skeleton. I need you to. I, I need a. I need you to promise to help me if I let you into town. This skeleton. Well, re read the scroll. Sure, sure. I will. I will read the scroll. You step up uh, and you read the scroll, and it <clears throat> it says uh, essentially. Let me pull up the, the text of it. Uh, deliver to uh, T. Relomenor. Does that name? sound familiar? Not to you, no. Okay. Well, it seems he's a delivery. <clears throat> yes. Do you... I, yeah, I know, but the skeleton wants to go into town, and it's, mm -hmm. a skeleton is not a I don't know how they got here. They just walked up earlier today. I, a skeleton is not sufficient. Uh, no, no offense, uh, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, it's not sufficient if the mayor found out that I had let a, a troll and a, a skeleton into town, I, 
well, it would it would be as as much as my job for it. Yes, I can see how that would be quite a problem. Well, do you know who this T. Malinorm is? Oh, Triskin, Triskin Reloman, or cert certainly they're they're in town, but I I can't go. I'm I'm on go I'm my name is Walter, uh, Walter Cartwright. I I'm the well the town guard, as it were, such as such as I am. Uh, Triskin certainly. Uh, so that's actually quite, quite directly related to the promise I want you to make to me, which is uh, to, if yes. I were to let you into town, one of the things that you would do would be to find Triskin and tell mm -hmm. them that I'm holding this delivery outside of town. What is the cost of, uh, payment for this service rendered? I'll let you into town. <laughs> Is access to town currently unavailable under other conditions? Well, you, I, I have to, I have to say, you can go in. Why? Cause, cause it's the, it's cause it's the off season, and people don't just come to town unless they've got a good. Do you have good reasons? Yes. Oh. Darn. Okay. Well, then, then I can let you in. But could you, could you please, could you please look for Triskin? I can't, I can't just leave this, this skeleton and Mr. Gilbert here, and uh, the rock troll. <clears throat> uh, un, un, <clears throat> unattended. Um, I, I have to stay out here until they, they go away or they come in. Is he also part of the delivery? He is the delivery. The skeleton. Or no, Mr. Mr. Gilbert. And Mr. Mr. Gilbert leans down at all four and a half feet of you and just gives a, a gentle Hello. Are you someone's property? Oh, I I took a liking to the finer things, uh, and to earn some pay, I hired out my services. I see. I understand. You can take your time out there, though. <clears throat> uh, my my pay is for the the whole duration. I'm I'm kind of on break, as it were. I mean, what's to stop you from just? tearing down the gates and entering. Are there gates? I feel like you could take this in. Not a gate so much as there is just an open wooden <laughs> This is archway. what I was picturing, right? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly right. Welcome to Puddle Town, open road, yeah. okay. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> uh, and, and Gilbert, hearing your question, kind of, hmm, I, I don't think that that would be very polite now, do you? Hmm, manners, I like you. Oh. My, my Fine. Th th thank, thank you, Mr. I'm Mr. Walton. confused. Walton. You said that to be allowed entry, you had to have a good reason to want to enter. Uh, you're you're directing this to Walter. Yes, the guard. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, oh well, y yes. Uh, the um, don't don't take this the wrong way, but um. <clears throat> Well, when when the the weather is what it is, uh, and it begins to rain, uh, people don't so much come here uh, on purpose, uh, really. Uh, th there's there's not so much in the way of, of visitors or, or tourists mm -hmm. or or even so much deliveries. This is. But it well, it sounds like Mr. Gilbert <laughs> has a good reason to enter. Uh, well, yes, yeah, he, he does, but um, the, the, the skull it, it kind of puts me in a bind. Uh, let me put it this way. If a troll just walked up to town, uh, I would I would run and, and ring the bell uh, that would get everybody's attention because a troll was coming to knock down the town. And I didn't do that because the skeleton <coughs> says that delivered to Triskan Rello Menor, but... But that doesn't change the fact that it's that he's a, he's a troll, however polite, and and if this is some kind of nefarious scheme to to 
sneak a troll into town without me running and ringing the bell, then I, I, ju I just don't want to be on the hook for that. I see. Okay, don't take this the wrong way. You seem like a nice young man, but I feel like <clears throat> if this troll wanted to overtake you, perhaps, and probably crush your skull, he could definitely do that without a thought in his mind. Or so I step say, on you while reading yes, a that's book. Also... He could do that mm -hmm. very easily, and Vad hey. knows a lot about how to do that. You, she could show him how, even... Do you happen to do bag checks here, by the way, to make sure no one's bringing in contraband? No? no? no. Cathar, isn't that lovely? They don't check your belongings before you enter. Yes, that's because the belongings aren't theirs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One should only check one's own belongings. Own. Their own belongings. Is that right? <coughs> yes, the belongings that they own. That they own. Yes. Yes. If you two will take, <clears throat> if you two will take, uh, a docency, uh, um, uh, ownership of, uh, responsibility for, the the skeleton and and Mr. Gilbert, then everybody gets to go into town and I get to go home. What? Uh, so who who guards in your absence? Oh, if if somebody's coming to the gate, I'll I'll get I'll get notified and I'll a a, a different bell will ring. We've got a, a ring system set up. Uh, how uh, how I'll, many I'll bells are there, and what do they all mean? <clears throat> well, I I don't I don't know all of the intricacies of of the Puddle Town bell system, but I know that there's one that I'm supposed to ring if there's a troll. There's one that I'm supposed to ring uh, if. If a safety inspector comes by, there's one that I'm supposed to ring. Uh, if somebody wants change in the, and I don't have enough, uh, there's there's one that I'm supposed to ring uh, it, when it's my lunchtime, uh, and then somebody else comes out uh, and and covers for me so that I can eat. Uh, and and there's one that that I don't ring, but I listen for when I'm inside the the gatehouse, uh, and he points over just off to the side where there is a little kind of hut set up uh, that that I come out and I greet the people uh, that are that are coming to the town what what makes that bell ring I'm not sure I don't know when does it happen when when people are are, <clears throat> are about uh, it, it rang when you got off of the wagon interesting. I didn't see any bell, did you? Bad. No, I <laughs> did not. I don't remember hearing a bell. Yeah, looking around at your immediate <clears throat> vicinity, you see that the pathway that goes through that wooden archway, the, the hut off to the side, some buildings further in, forest off to the, we'll say the east, it's not really, off to the left of you. Uh, you don't see any visible bells. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, you, what would be our obligation if we were to take responsibility for this sizable but pleasant person? Uh, well, if if uh, Mr. Gilbert or or the skeleton <clears throat> uh, were to were to cause a ruckus or or some property damage or run up a bill or or really cause any short sort of chicanery or or chaos or, or, or that sort of thing um, well then uh, it wouldn't be me that the mayor gets mad at it, it would be you it would be Cathar because Cathar you can put it on his tab he just came into some wealth recently so I'm sure he can cover the bill and as I'm saying that I'm going to the skeleton and, like putting my arm around him and just <clears throat> grabbing the scroll from his hand now tell me do you speak It does not react in any way. Interesting. In fact, having taken the scroll out of its hand, it leaves its hand outstretched, <clears throat> as though it were still presenting something. Huh. Katha, this will be a fun little journey. Do you think you could ride on it? 
I don't think it's strong enough. Maybe that one, and I point to the troll. Can I ride on you? She stepped on me a few moments ago and injured my leg. Oh, oh, you poor thing. I know. Uh, and Gilbert will kind of reach down uh, <clears throat> as though to, to kind of pick you up, and he will if you let him. Oh, yeah. Sure. And set set you on his, on his shoulder. And I'm uh, just going to, like quietly complain about how she <laughs> muddied my cloak and and uh, I, I think that she's going to make it right and she's going to pay for my room for the night but you know I have yet to see her dry cleaning <clears throat> I, I can't have dry cleaning I have allergies I have a skin condition <laughs> and uh, Walter looks up, up at, at you Cathar looks at Gilbert Looks at Vad, looks at the skeleton, says, "Okay, your your problem now. Welcome Cathar's to Cathar's problem. Thank Cathar, you. Cathar, Cathar's problem. Welcome to Puddle Town. Goodbye." Uh, and he's gonna turn and tromp in the the now kind of squelchy <clears throat> mud and the rain, uh, and and shut himself into his guardhouse. Uh, what was the rock troll's name again? Gilbert, Mister Gilbert, Mister Gilbert. I'm curious, Mr. Gilbert, do you know how to dance? Uh, I've seen dancing. I, I don't know that I know how, but I know what it looks like. Have you ever seen someone hop in the air and click their heels together? Uh, no, I haven't. I bet Why? you could do it. It's quite entertaining. <clears throat> I'll bet I could too You should try, I'd love to see it <laughs> Give me a persuasion check Please That's not fantastic. <clears throat> Gilbert looks at you on his on his shoulder and he says, Uh well um are you sure I should with you on my on my shoulder? Um I like climb up and like wrap myself around his ear and I say, <laughs> Go for it. If you say so, Mr. Cathar. Uh, and he he kind of steadies his feet a little bit in the the half mud, half packed dirt of the ground, and he heaves himself up and smashes his feet together, uh, and manages to get his feet back under him as he's on his way back down. And he stumbles a little bit, but says, "Oh." Did I did I do it, Mr. Cathar? Did did you see me, Vad? Yes, I think the whole town saw you. Was there like a noticeable ground shake when this occurred? Uh, th there <clears throat> was a noticeable like thud. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It didn't go very far okay. in terms of. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> um, does the guard react in any way? The door stays shut. Okay. All right. <laughs> you did fantastic. Oh, I th thank you. I suppose we should find your friend or or your employer. Uh, T. <clears throat> T. Rollo Menor has has hired me for uh, to stand guard at their shop. T. Rollo Menor. Uh -huh. Do you know where he lives? No, I don't know where they live. Or really, it was through a service. I don't actually know what they look like. Oh. I think the, the scroll knows, <clears throat> though. Yeah. The scroll? Uh, Thad, can you ask the scroll where to go? 
<clears throat> Kyle, did we start with inspiration? I can't remember. No, you didn't. Damn. You okay. Gotta earn it. Fine. Um. Well, I, this <clears throat> this skeleton doesn't seem to be able to vocalize. So I would say we go to the end out of this rain and figure out where to find this tea melon was. But he said to ask the scroll, not the skeleton. Um. I. Okay. Fine. She'll kind of like regrettingly take out the scroll. Scroll? Where is T. Malinois? Like thinking this is a really stupid idea. Roll me an arcana check, please. <clears throat> is this forbidden knowledge, perhaps? Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. Uh, upon half sarcastically asking the scroll about. Uh, T. Relamenor, <clears throat> uh, you get uh, a brief uh, flash of uh, somebody's face. Uh, they appear to be a, a half all, half elf. They appear to me be a, a male, uh, and they're uh, in a, a shop. <clears throat> fades. Uh, best I can I can tell you is you would recognize this person from this moment if you were to see them again. Well, um, it probably has nothing to do with the scroll, but I just had a vision of a man in a shop. Half elven man. I'm sure that is who we're looking for. Is it a man from your book? No, it's a is real man. It, are you reading a romance novel about a half no, elven I man am, who owns a shop? I am not reading a romance book because I do not have time for romance. Inside you check. Like romance novels. Is she telling <laughs> the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, roll it and uh, Vod prepare to answer that question uh, should he do well. <laughs> A 16. <clears throat> it is not a romance novel. Um, if you look at the book, it's kind of like a thick um, tome. And the language it's actually written in, I don't know if you would even recognize it. It's written in... Um, in... Infernal. Yeah, Cathar, do you do you speak and or read <laughs> Infernal? I do not. Ah. Uh, Vod, roll a roll a deception if you're you're. <clears throat> I mean, do you, if you're trying to convince novel, me that it is a romance novel, <laughs> persuasion. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 Persuasion. That makes more sense. Okay, I think one of my features means I can roll this with, with intelligence. Let me double check. Um, yeah, I can use intelligence instead of charisma with A5V because of one of my feats as a lore master bard. 19. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you don't know what the name of the book is that <clears throat> Vod is reading right now, but it doesn't look romantic, really. All right, then. So you just happen to have a random image, but it has nothing to do with the scroll that you spoke to. No, of course not. No. Just sometimes it must just the world be... works in mysterious ways, and, and the connection reached out to me across the ether to tell me this information. So, there you have it. Shall we? Absolutely. I would love to see our room. 
Your room. Separate from You're mine. getting me my own room. That's very nope, kind of absolutely you. absolutely not. You can Did you outside. hear that? She said she's getting me my own room. <laughs> it, it seems like the least that she could do for having kicked and stomped you so meanly on purpose in the road like a dog. Shut it, troll. Quite oh, right. I will Quite smite right. you. Oh. Oh. Okay. And Gilbert just starts to, to walk uh, and kind of ducks under the, the archway into town. Uh, and uh, you walk on for a while. And very shortly, you see uh, a sign. That, that's standing there uh, indicating uh, the Green Swan Inn. And there's a Green Swan on the sign, and there's an arrow pointing. Uh, and you, you follow where the arrow is pointing, and you can see a large multi story uh, tavern inn uh, with the Green Swan Inn. It's right here, written on the, the front of it in, in big letters. You can tell that the sign is supposed to light up, it is not at the moment lit. Well, let's see what this town has to offer. I'm sure, it's nothing to write home about. What time of day is it? It is mid afternoon, um, but it's kind of dark. Uh, it's very overcast mm -hmm. at this point, and it has continued to rain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's it's fairly tree covered the area that we're in. the The area that that the town is kind of scattered in seems to have been cleared of trees. Uh, but the, the forest does kind of encroach at the edge of it. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. All right. And so view of the lake at this point is pretty clear. Uh, visibility isn't great right now, but if you look down this path, instead of diverting off to the, the Green Swan Inn, mm -hmm. you can see that it continues and eventually <clears throat> curves around. But if you go off the path as it turns, you can see straight ahead... Uh, that the the lake is there, and were it not kind of pissing down rain, it would probably be glittering and sparkling in the sun. Okay. Um. So, Vod, you hear a sound come from the area around the rock troll's head. Basically, um, it sounds like. Um, well, let me let me make a deception check first. <clears throat> oh, jeez, I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> not your not your speciality. I no, no. Um Although I'm not sure how I'm getting, I'm rolling a 14, getting a 13. Something you, about my stats. You have a minus be... one to something. Oh yes, I do. To charisma. That that's would where be that's it. Coming uh... from. Okay. Uh, can you roll an insight check for me, Bad? Because that'll affect how I describe this. I sure can. And let me double check. Um, insight. I can also roll with intelligence instead of. Instead of wisdom. Fifteen. Okay. Um, so you hear a sound that is very clearly like a high-pitched squeal, um, reminiscent of uh, extreme discomfort and fear um, come from Cathar. Uh, and as you look up, you see him moving to the back of the troll so that he, the troll is between him and whatever is down at the bottom of the slow decline into the lake. Uh, and he looks down and says, we should probably find our rooms. Vod just kind of studies you for a moment. And her hand goes to where she keeps all of her books in her bag, as if maybe she's going to pull it out to take notes. But she thinks better of it. Yes. Let's go inside, shall we? And as Vod and Cathar walk through the front doors of the Green Swan Inn, 
we are going to take our intermission. Uh, we'll be back in five or ten minutes, and uh, from there, we shall continue. See y'all in a bit. See y'all in just a little bit. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Did you miss us? Well, good news. We're back. And as we we faded off for for a, a brief moment of of pause time, our heroes were uh, approaching the the green swan inn. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, and as you get up to the the green swan inn, there's a kind of a covered uh, front porch, wooden, uh, and Mr. Gilbert uh, kind of starts. <clears throat> padding around to try and find where you're clinging to his back Cathar to, to bring you down. So, I, I shouldn't go in the building, uh, Mr. Cathar. Uh, it's all right. I can lower myself, friend. And um, I will use my sticky padded fingers and start crawling down his body to the ground. Oh, <laughs> you tickle, Mr. Cathar. And you get yourself back on the ground uh, and step in. Yep. You step into the Green Swan Inn uh, and uh, you're presented with uh, a bar on the, the far side and tables scattered throughout. There's a couple of people in and they don't really look up at your entrance. There's a, a dwarf talking to a... Oh, who is, who is that? Uh, a human uh, jawing in the corner. Uh, and there is, in the other corner, uh, a lizard folk uh, passed out, uh, kind of leaning on the table. Uh, at the, the far end of the bar, uh, you see uh, somebody talking to... Uh, somebody standing behind the bar who is... As, as required, uh, wiping a glass with a clean white rag, uh, nodding along uh, to this, this person. Uh, Pearl, would you like to describe who's talking to Barkeep? So, Pearl's a mess. <laughs> there we go. Is that a description enough? <clears throat> she is an elf. Um, her appearance is kind of forever changing, but at, for the moment, she's kind of sprawled in a bunch of different capes and necklaces and scarves and things like that and um yeah so she she's talking to the barkeep i tell you there is misfortune coming to your bar uh, very very good yes <clears throat> do you have you... <clears throat> oh oh i assume generally speaking yes um do, do you have any details could you tell me something more uh, would you like would you like a card reading you like a card reading? Oh. Well, yeah, the, the the last three times you asked me, I, I I didn't really want one, but now that you ask a fourth, I'm coming around to the idea. Yes, all right, I'll lay lay out some cards for me. That's okay. There is a sheep in your past, is there not? A sheep. Um. Y yes. Um. Past. Present and, and future <clears throat> mutton is is uh, in the stew. Uh, this oh, I'm sorry. The sheep still all die. Wood, wood symbolizes that this inn is made of wood, is it not? Last I checked, yes. Very good. You're you're right on on both accounts so far. Stone, rock. There is a rock troll outside your inn. I sense it's coming. There's a what? A rock troll. A rock troll. Oh. And, and he drops the glass, which disappears behind the, the bar, and, and you hear the sound of glass breaking, and, and he reaches, rummages around, and pulls on something. And in the distance, all three of you start to hear ka-clang, 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 at which point uh, the, the two people who are talking look up and look at the, the barkeep, Bark goes, uh, and and the the three of them head outside. Uh, he he hello, welcome. I'm. Uh, I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, and he proceeds <clears throat> outside, as do the other two. Uh, and out of out of the inn. Uh, Wait, 
You're in terrible danger! Y yes, trolls are dangerous! No, uh, he's actually not... He, he is not dangerous. Uh, he is an employee of a... Uh, <clears throat> Vod? <clears throat> you know the person that we're looking for, by appearance at least, and name, don't you? Yes, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I think I know that lady shouting in the corner. Why is that? Oh, thank God you know her. Yes, uh, you two know each other. Talk. Very good. <laughs> oh, there we are. You're in trouble. I think oh. it. I think it. It's in the cards. It's in the cards. Okay, Pro, um, maybe just, I'm going to put my hands on your shoulders. Maybe just take a deep breath. Um, okay, yeah, maybe a little bit slower. Maybe not as deep. Um, Okay, okay, I don't know what you... Why are you here? I think the trouble. I think the trouble. I gave you a prophecy, did I not? I gave you a prophecy. Yes. You gave me good wrong. fortune. Oh. I was wrong. You're in serious danger. The last two cards. When the sun is as yellow as the wheat, you will be sunk to the bottom of the lake like a brick. Well, oh. Pearl... Before we jump to conclusions, I don't know if you've seen the town yet, but I don't think the sun's gonna shine anytime soon, so we're safe on that one. Oh, thank God. There you go, yep. Second, um, I'm a strong swimmer, so there you go. I will not sink. Oh, you can swim. Thank God I've never looked to swim myself. Mm, oh, noted. <laughs> I kind of look over at Cathar, now realizing I'm in a lake town with two creatures who uh, uh, don't like the water. Ha, you have another associate that you have met other places that is here by happenstance, Fad. Yes, that is quite odd. Yes, it, it is, isn't okay. it, Vod? Cathar... I don't like your tone. Are you implying something? I'm simply suggesting that there's quite a curiosity. Somehow you're gathering people you know around you. It is not by choice I am learning. Pearl, why don't you read Cathar's fortune? I'm sure he would this, love that. This was all a part of the prophecy? An accusation and... would happen before the bell rings four times? I know, it's, I know it's something bad is going to happen. I think that it's already done that. Yes, I... Should we go see what the <clears throat> ringing is about? Actually? I am a bit worried about our trollish friend. Yes. Come on, Pearl. Leave your cards behind. It will be fine. Wait! And she's going to reach forward and quickly um, grab Cathar's hand. And so, <laughs> doing so, I'm going to use my ability Unfickle Fate. And so... What this lets me do is, for an hour, we both get to know a premonition about Cathar. We both, you and I? Yeah, and so that, okay. we know it for about an hour. Okay. Or you specifically for an hour, I know it for ever. <laughs> so, just so as I understand, you both immediately, like, that's so Raven, have a premonition right now. Uh, wow. And Cathar knows it for, that's not a deep pull. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and Cathar can like hold the the premonition details in his mind for an hour, uh, and <clears> after <throat> which it fades, and and you have it uh, forevermore. Yes. Uh, okay, you uh, disassociate from your body, and you find that you feel you're behind the eyes of Cathar. You you understand this inherently. And Cathar, you understand that you are behind your own eyes. And you are looking up. And you can see that there is far, far above you the light of the sun. But between you and the sun is a long, long distance of dark, murky, foggy water. And you realize that you have the sensation of holding your breath. And you are down there. Can I rotate my other eye to see what's behind me? Sure, yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, and how does that fuck with Pearl? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so doing that, uh, first, Cathar, give me a a wisdom saving throw. Me? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, and actually, also Pearl. Okay. Goodness, no. <laughs> It's like, it's like, where are you? The little die is like hiding on the saving throws on the sheet. It's, is yeah. that a nat one? That's a nat one. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Most people aren't used to 270 degree fields of vision, so we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Cathar, you you wrote you swivel one of your eyes around to to look uh, <clears throat> behind, and because you're looking up, you're looking kind of behind and down mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see uh, another figure down there below that you don't immediately recognize. You don't have a ton of experience with aquatic type creatures, but it's vaguely humanoid. Okay. Uh, and with the, the, the growing tension of holding your breath, building and mounting as you look up and back uh, eventually it, it builds and overwhelms you and pops like a bubble and you're back in the green swan inn and Pearl you are horribly nauseous you are dizzy and you're on the verge of throwing up it is you are it is the worst spins you've ever had you have seen more of the world than you ever have before and that's saying something for you oh I feel like Pearl just <laughs> She's already got like seven strength. Nothing's keeping this woman up. <laughs> She's falling backwards, like just straight on her back. The sun will shine, will sink like a brick. No one will float, will sink like a brick. What did you do to me? <sighs> I see something terrible. You see it too? You see it too? Uh, yes. Deep water is generally not a good thing. I don't like it very much at all. How did... What did... Why? N not again without my permission. I will do it again without your permission. I see it coming. Okay, uh... well, to be fair, Pearl, you see a lot of things coming. Um, so... Is that some sort of innuendo? No, it is... Oh, <laughs> oh thank goodness. Oh. Are there... That's not my field, I'm in. Oh. Are there any, like, flies or anything <laughs> in the inn? Uh, not inside the inn, no, no I'm inside sorry. Inside the inn, okay. Yeah. Um, then I pull a jar of night crawlers out of my pack and uh, pop it open, and I just start pulling them out one at a time and slurping them up like wet spaghetti noodles. I'm, um, we should go check on our, um, troll friend. And then I just start walking out the door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during all of this, <clears throat> the barkeep has left. Like he's not standing with you anymore. He went outside. Ooh, is the bar unmanned? Yes. Is there anything shiny, like coins, like laying around? Uh, not there's there aren't any coins that you can see from mm. where you are the back wall has your classic like mirror set up with some shelves uh various bottles and clay jugs and urns you know liquid containers stacked up on those shelves okay i take a moment to admire myself in the mirror while they were doing all that um you are magnificent and then, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> wow people should worship me. Oh, we're leaving, and as Cathar leaves, I'll turn to Pearl. Pearl, darling, you have to be careful with who you tell horror and untold fortunes to. Not everyone takes kindly to it. Don't you see? Something has lured you here, my dear. And me. And that... Yes, it is quite strange that this is all occurring. Hmm. What exactly did you see, Pearl? Water. I saw water. And mm -hmm. 
looking up at the sun, the sun shining down on my beautiful skin, but my skin that was probably drowning, or no, it was Cathars, or the both of us. And there was something else. May have been a creature, may have been a monster, may have been you, may have been a, a monster. Nose. I immediately like grasp you. What did the monster look like? Uh, do I know what the the figure looks like? Roll me. I'm gonna ask you to roll me something. I need to check something real quick. Something. something. How about a charisma check? <laughs> <laughs> it is likely not going to be uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, roll me a nature check. Nature check. Oi, oi, Sevaloi. Bro. Bro. It was humanoid. Okay, right. Can I roll a deception check to say that it's not? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> uh, how, okay, so I get a I get a um, a little expertise die on my deception checks. So what is that die? Is that a D four? Yeah. Okay. So we got a 22. <laughs> it was a monster! Tentacles, tendrils, huge and black! You see Bard get a giant grin on her face. <laughs> well, that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand eyes. I immediately just go to wherever I dropped my bag and I'm like digging through stuff, like throwing it behind me to find my notebook. Okay, tentacles, a thousand eyes, what else, Pearl? I'm listening. Scales! Scales as thick as a dragon! Oh, oh, oh. God, it's okay. Breathing! Uh, some sort of fire! It's a fire! Fire! Fire under the water. Ooh, very Magical powerful fire. indeed. Oh, magical water. Okay. Anything else? We were all in grave danger because it was at least 500 feet wide! Uh, Vaughn kind of like sits down at the bar, just very like excited. She doesn't know how to contain herself. Pearl, when, when do we meet this magnificent creature? <clears throat> when the sun is out? On the day where the sun is out and I've heard the weather. Hold on. It's going to be good very soon. Okay. I knew I made the right choice coming to Puddle Town. Um, and I'll slam the book shut. Thank you, Pearl. You've given me good fortune today. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Because you're like a Oracle fortune teller. But... Fortune teller. Yeah. Wait, I'm getting something else. Oh. <laughs> Pull my back notebook back up. I see a stranger approaching. Very handsome. Mm hmm And is looking for an eligible bachelorette. <laughs> He's saying, Pearl, you're so beautiful. Your skin is so lovely. Your hair is so curly and, and shiny and bouncy and full of luster. And he's just giving me a lot of compliments. Yes. <clears throat> How mm -hmm. does that make you feel? <laughs> Any jealousy? Um... Pearl, I don't have time for romance, um, but I'm sure he sounds like a lovely man, and I wish you all the best. Now, shall we go see what's going on outside? Yeah, I'm, yes, yes. Let's just hope the sun's not shining. Or maybe we can hope a little. <gasps> you <laughs> kind of step... Yeah, yeah, I gather Pearl and, like, pull her out. Uh, you step back out of the Green Swan Inn onto the, the covered uh, porch uh, where Cathar has been uh, standing there, and you see uh, the, the barkeep uh, and the uh, and another figure that you haven't seen before uh, in uh, a long, dark black cloak uh, with the hood kind of like half up, so you can still see their face, but it's kind of protecting the back of their head from the rain. 
uh, and it's it's a, it's another human man who they're both standing talking uh, up to to Mr. Gilbert, uh, and as you're stepping out, the the human and the dwarf are stepping back in. They're they're they've seen what they really need to see, uh, and and the bell has stopped ringing. Uh, and you can overhear the conversation. Um, the, the barkeep saying, oh, "For Triskin, for Triskin, did you not? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Did you did you know about this?" The mayor says, "No, I did not know that Triskin had hired the services of a rock troll for to protect their shop." And you, and he, he turns and looks at the skeleton, who is once again holding out the scroll at the end of its arm. You. But this this is so remarkably. How did you even get in? You t- you three. We, you have something to do with this. Come come here. I uh, we were only told to uh, deliver him so that your guardsmen could uh, <clears throat> finish his shift in peace. Walter, Walter, Walter. He'll do anything to get out of responsibility. But you left him outside? Unattended? Uh, Yes, Katha, how could you? He couldn't fit through the door. I didn't want him to injure himself or damage your property. (coughs) With that barkeep kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, he really shouldn't come in. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I I don't want him in the green swan. That was very well, very well. But <clears throat> you two brought this skeleton and this this Gilbert into town for for purpose of fulfilling the contract that he has signed. Is that what you have done here? Cathar uh, here has. Yes, I am just Cathar in and town. You in town? I'm the mayor. Uh, oh, pleasure. I am <clears throat> Redania Binyefre Alfe Bajelinia. But you can call me Vod. Very, very well. Vod. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, we were tasked. Uh, uh, the, my understanding is that there would be payment from the mayoral office for the effort of protecting <laughs> and bringing him to his destination. <clears throat> Well, if Walter has promised you payments, then I will, I will, uh, I will fulfill that, that promise in a way. Certainly, I, I can, I can recompense you for, for doing this service as soon as you have <clears throat> done so. Yes. Well, in order to do so, we would need to know the address of the recipient. Which I was about to ask your bartender when there was a loud ruckus of bells. I don't understand the bell situation. I'd like to have that explained to me, please, if I'm going to be living here. Uh, Even temporarily, I don't particularly want to be getting woken up at all hours by random bells being rung. An entirely reasonable request. Um, listen. Can we have this conversation inside, um, Gilbert? Please, as you were, uh, would you like anything? Uh, and Gilbert sheepishly kind of leans down and, and whispers something in Bartender's ear. Bartender <clears throat> gets kind of a quizzical look. And says, I, I think we have some of that, yes. Um, I'll, I'll be out in a minute. Stay right where you are. And Gilbert kind of happily says, okay. Uh, and you're, you're led back in inside. Uh, barkeep uh, takes up his position behind the bar, uh, and the mayor leads you to the the patron side of the bar and, and leans up against it and says, uh, several questions I have for you and you have for me. We can begin with the bells, if, if you like, uh, or some other more pressing line of inquiry. The bells it is. The bells, yes. The bells are something of a of an ingenious system uh, put in place by myself in conjunction with with others, uh, and they are available for um, providing information, rallying uh, townsfolk to the the communal defense of the town uh, if needed, 
Uh, it also announces when when the, the gift shop uh, is having a, a sale on merchandise and uh, several other public service type announcements. Wait, I have a question. No. What happens when the bell rings four times? Four, four times. Um, specifically four <clears> times? <throat> four. Um, let me think. If memory serves, exactly four is something of a, a strange situation. Uh, that would be... That would be the... Well, I imagine that... Yes, j four bells is for when jet skis have gone rogue. Oh, no! A jet ski will go rogue when you drop! I'm sorry. Your, your name was... You know my name. I'm very famous around these parts. The Oracle, the Oracle, the Oracle. I message the mayor because I have an ability. Um, I have to pull up exactly which one where I can message people. And I just message his name. Like, just say you know her. Her name is Pearl. Uh, the mayor kind of glances over at you and nods. It's, oh, yes, yes, you, of course. How could I have been so stupid as to not recognize an oracle such as yourself? Pearl, yes, of course I know you, obviously. I, I won't sign anything. I'm sorry. No Darn. No autographs. How many other patrons are in this bar? Uh, <laughs> right now, there's a total of three other than the three of you and the mayor. Okay, so one of the abilities that I have is called... Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's it's an called interesting name. <laughs> clerical Charisma. And so I can make performance checks to rally anyone around me like draw in a crowd and so okay. that's what i will I'm say try. before before you proceed one of them is passed out so you're, you're looking at two <laughs> that's fine he can squiggle across the ground <laughs> <laughs> it's an eight Which... uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the, the two folks that are, that are sitting back at their table, uh, that they were in, they, they look up at you, uh, again, and are, are listening, uh, to, to your performance. What does this performance look like? Um, it's a over-exaggeration of a reading. The jet skis will crash. You will drown. Like a brick, you will sink. <clears throat> And I just want to cause a scene. I want to be the drama. You you have everyone's attention. They're all they're all watching you as you as you go on about this this malady that's coming. Uh, and in in a lull in your conversation, the the mayor will say the the jet skis are perfectly safe. They are they are inspected. They are they are perfectly they are perfectly safe. And besides, if someone were to drown. They would be stopped from drowning. People are not permitted to drown in our lake. Can I insight check when you said the jet skis are safe? We check them all the time. Yeah, I absolutely. want to insight a specific statement. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve. He believes that the jet skis are safe. Okay. Mayor, I have another question. Yes? How many people have died because of your jet skis? I'm going to answer that in, in two parts. Uh, one, uh, they're not my jet skis. They are the jet skis that are the property of the Green Swan Inn, and he gesticulates over to one side of the bar, and you turn and you look... And you see another sign, jet ski rental here. Uh, <clears throat> and how many people have died? In direct, be, be directly because of them? None. Nobody. I I feel like you're beating around the lake here. Is is there something that you're not telling us? And I'm gonna cast zone of truth. Yes, there is an immense amount of no, things I... that I am not telling you. Of course, I'm the mayor. I run the town. <laughs> but, but in, in, 
regards to the lake and the and the jet skis being involved, are you do is this something that we should be worried about if we go onto the lake? Like a <coughs> monster. <coughs> Like a monster. The the lake monster wouldn't hurt anybody who's visited this town. It's a lake. <gasps> and, I told you. And the the jet skis are, well, something you should be aware of is, it is entirely too reasonable to temporarily override the the safety <clears throat> controls on their speed. And I don't appreciate this this kind of lackadaisical magic casting upon us all, but uh, you're, you're new in town, so you, you get a pass. Hey, just one more question. I'm just a very inquisitive type of person. Do you actually intend to give us any money? Because before you were laughing a little bit, and I'm kind of poor. I've got no no money, no clothes. Uh, what I was giggling at, the, the the payment that I'm going to give you for doing this favor that, <clears throat> that, that frankly, Walter had no, no authority to promise you payment for, uh, is another job, for which I will pay you. Oh, uh, okay, you are paying us for a job with a job? Yes. No. That sounds like slavery. I haven't yeah. tried yet. So it's kind of like pain and exposure. <clears throat> Let me put it this way. Please do not expose yourself to us. Have you known to show a bit of shoulder? <laughs> you have asked me to cover the debt of someone who I have no obligation to cover the debt of. Does that track? Walter promised you something to, to take Gilbert into town. And... Well, if Walter wants to pay you for that, one, I don't know how, uh, and two, that's his business. Is he also your slave and has no no income because you do not pay him for his job? I pay him a wage for his job, which he and I directly negotiated with each other. In this conversation, I'm the third party, where you had a conversation with some other person, and I haven't verified that you've actually talked to Walter, though I suppose the... I knew that his name was Walter. Well, yes, but I knew that her name was Pearl. Yes, because you know who she is. Are Every you suggesting person. that Walter is of the same degree of uh, fame as the great oracle Pearl? Uh, actually, yes. <clears throat> wow. Really? But not in the way that I think you're thinking. Hmm. There must be... You, you, you must have a very uh, great guard system here in this small town of yours. How many Ask for guards a guard. patrol the town? Walter. Right. And and the bells help in some way? Yes, they, they let him know when <clears throat> he needs to... You know, get up out of his chair and leave the guard tower and step outside and talk to people. And, uh, in fact, he didn't come running when the troll bell went off. Walter, 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 you cannot be sleeping in the middle of the day. Who told the troll bell to trigger? And, and at that, a uh, barkeep pipes up and he says, Oh, I, I did. Um, I, I pulled the, the troll bell rope back behind the bar, uh, when when Pearl said that there was a troll coming. Uh, I probably should have known that there was something about it, given... Well, never mind. And he goes back to... Would, would any of you like something to drink? Yes, please. Uh, we've got a, a number of, of house specials. Um... Yes, do you have a Shorguan Bordolo 17? Perhaps. Shorglon Bordolo 17. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll yes. have to check downstairs. Um, Thank you. I assume all of this will be getting billed to Vod's room. No, it won't be. 
she it would is be on going the mayor's to be task. purchasing two rooms, one for each of us. No, I will <clears throat> not. But everything is on her tab. It is not. Barkeep and the mayor kind of lock eyes and, and have a moment, and then Barkeep leaves to go downstairs. Uh, and the mayor, mayor kind of interrupts your, your back and forth about whose tab it's going to be on. And says, consider this. I will front you part of the payment for this job that I have for you uh, that is, well, this is really putting myself out there, but it doesn't matter. I will put you up here with a limited stipend for room and board, uh, and all you have to do is, once you're you know, settled and have taken care of your business and gotten dear Gilbert, who's such a docile fellow, over to, to Triskin, uh, go investigate uh, a tower off in, the, off in the forest for me. Um, counterpoint, I would like to circle back to the sea creature, or the lake creature. Yes, the um, lake And monster. I would, yes, I would like to arrange a meeting with him. Thank you. Uh, what is exactly your, your, the nature of your interest in, in the lake monster? Well, you see, I am a woman of scholar and knowledge, so I wish to just speak to the monster. Hmm. Speak to... Well, I, I think that at very least uh, a meeting can be arranged. Um, generally, the, the lake monster shows themselves uh, when, when people uh, pay for and take the lake monster tour. Um, fine, I will book your tour, but I would like a close, personal, intimate meeting with the lake monster. Thank you very much. Not just... I, I leave all negotiations of close and intimate meetings with the lake monster up to the lake monster. You can take oh. that up with them on the tour. Maybe where's that <clears throat> drink? Barkeep comes back up and says, uh... I forgot the name of the, the wine you asked for, but it's right here, uh, and, and pours you a, a glass of a, kind of a, a dark, fizzy red. Can I slap it away? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, it's poison. <laughs> it's poison, you know. Well, I just lean over to the barkeep. Can you just bring the bottle? Just, just, just give me the bottle. C certainly, uh, and he'll slide it off around outside of Pearl's range uh, and, and get it over to you. I'll just take a little guzzle. Not my finest moment, this is. <laughs> oh. What is it that um, you're needing investigated about this tower and why can't Walter take care of it? Well, Walter, Walter, we keep at, at his post. Um, he, he lives there. Uh, and really, uh, well, you, you've met the man. He, he doesn't have a, a great deal of initiative about him. Uh, what I'd like you to look into in this tower is, well, you can see it uh, in, the, in the distance, in the, in the forest. And it's it's a bit far off, and it's lain dormant and dark for quite some time. But of a night, I, I've seen and had reports of other people seeing uh, lights flickering in the, the topmost section of it. Uh, and, well, I, I don't really want to go myself. Uh, I have other mayoral things to be about. Um, I'm on call to deal with... The occasional remarkably polite rock troll who wanders into town, or, or people who want to cause false alarms. I see. And how far away is this tower that Vod is agreeing to investigate in uh, exchange for the cost of the rooms that she needs to purchase for her and I? And me. And, well, you, uh, well yes, it's... Uh, not more than an 
hour and a half, two hours of, of hiking into the forest? You want us to hike? Yes. Yes, I want you to walk into the forest. For two hours. For two hours, and then climb a bunch of stairs afterwards. I feel like we're really not getting the better half of the bargain here. I did not sign up for manual labor. I am not a laborer. That is readily apparent. Well, if you'd like to uh, see about room and board um, for, for yourselves, that's certainly something that, that you can arrange with, with Barkeep. Um, listen, uh, as I said, my oral duties, etc., etc., uh, feel free to investigate the tower or don't. I'll be in touch with Barkeep. If you need to speak to me, I'll be at Town Hall. Adieu, adieu. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. And he kind of slowly saying goodbyes, <clears throat> walks backwards, and then turns and steps out of the Green Swan Inn. I have a question for you both. Yes, Mr. Mayor spoke of another job. What is this other job? The tower? No, the other one. The other one, dear. You were looking for oh, somebody? Oh, yes. Yeah, so the skeleton and the troll that you saw outside, um, I believe, is leading us to an elf, half elven man um, by the name of. Um, just on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Ralamonar. And we are to deliver these creatures to him here she can describe you... him in great deal I can okay well that name that you said I'm very familiar with Malin oh. Roar was it Ralamonwa yes T. that's the one T is the first T. name which <laughs> stands for Triskin um <laughs> and the <laughs> and the liquid that I spilt from the cup that I <laughs> smacked yes. over. I'm going to be like looking at it. I see it here. I see it here. And then I'm going to dip my fingers into it and cast my oral oracle channel divinity. Oh no, it's all seen oracle channel divinity. And so what that lets me do is speak a name. And so in this case it's Tristan Melonroar or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and what that lets me do is I get to see a shot of whatever he's looking at and so that that gets in my little brain i can recall it whenever okay uh so <clears throat> you you dip your fingers uh into this this spilled wine uh and and channel your divinity uh and speak aloud the name triskin Rallomenor, and you are someplace else the the snapshot that you see there is, uh, to our human real-world eyes, a Russian blue cat sitting on a counter uh, with its mouth open, kind of like looking at from uh, at you from your perspective. Uh, and the the background is the counter uh, and uh, a shop that is. There are uh, shelves of fishing rods and drawers, uh, closed drawers and, and open drawers with fish hooks sticking out uh, and uh, small knives hanging on the walls, various fishing supplies uh, and you snap back to reality and that is that is what you see. I hope none of you are afraid or allergic to cats. No, I'm Good. Did you see something? I saw eyes. Dark eyes. Probably. <gasps> no, 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 no. This, yeah. These belong to a human. Two eyes. <clears throat> and a blue Russian cat. You could tell because it was speaking in Russian. <sighs> fishing equipment, fishing rods, spears, tackles, baits. Tristan likes to fish. Cat fish. Cat and a fish. He likes to catfish people. He could be the mayor. Well, that sounds like it's a possibility.
ability, but why don't we meet him before we jump to conclusions? I would like to say I warned you before something terrible happens. Barkeep, where is the fishing supply store? Oh, Friskin's shop? <clears throat> it's just just down the way. It's uh, uh, it's pretty close to the lake, naturally speaking. Oh. Uh, Vod, you can escort our new stony friend. I'm sure you don't need any assistance from me for that. Um, actually, I do need your assistance. I am not laboring for free by myself. Before you go, uh, Barkeep pipes up. Uh, well, I, I would like to know whether you plan on taking the mayor's deal or not. Otherwise, I will ask for, for payment for the, the bottle of, of wine. Yes, we will take the deal, um, but uh, do you happen to have horses or wagon, perhaps? Uh, Small I, cart? I, I think there's a, a donkey and a cart stabled uh, left here from the last on season. Um, why? I would need them to be thrown into the negotiations and be part of our deal, and we will accept. You don't really know how the mayor... You've made it very clear that he doesn't like it when you negotiate with other people on his behalf. I'm not, I can't make I a deal for the friends on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, I'll put it on your tab. On Cathar's tab. <clears throat> on, on the mayor's tab. tab. It's the tab. It's all. You're all. The tab is all the mayor's tab. The mayor is covering you. your expenses. Fine. Perfect. Yeah. Sure. You're gonna take the deal. That's fine. When do you want them? Um. Just keep them on hold for me. All right. Mule and cart on retainer. Noted. <clears throat> Can I provision you with uh, some sandwiches for the road or something? Oh uh, yes, please. That would be wonderful. All right, a, a sandwich for you of some kind, and for the, the two of you walking around, uh, you... And he looks at you, Cathar, and he's like, forgive me for, for participating in stereotype, but would you like some leeches? You have leeches? Well, yes, naturally. Are they um, northern leeches, or are they southern red-bellied leeches? The southern red belly are dried, unfortunately. The northern leeches are fresh, though. I would very much prefer uh, some fresh leeches, yes. And if you do have a mule in the barn, I'm fairly certain there's probably a very large supply of fat, juicy flies as well, if you could gather those up. I'll, I'll see about gathering some flies. Uh, I, I may not have time to, to get to it, but, but you're welcome to take as many as there are. Uh, for yourself. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. They're a good snack, full of protein. I disagree, but I understand why you would say that. No, it's a scientific fact. They're full of protein. Many things are, are full of protein. And he pulls out a, a small jar of of liquid with the, it's full of kind of wriggling and squirming. Uh, excellent. Leeches. And I I open it right up, and mm -hmm. what does it smell like? Uh, it's very briny. Uh, the northern leeches are a saltwater leech, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, okay. and there is there's a there's an undercurrent mm -hmm. of of bitter pitch. All right, um, I will shove it right in Vod's face and say these are excellent quality. Would you like some? Hold on, I gotta see something. Let me see what I have. <laughs> um. Oh, that might be too mean. I gag because it's disgusting. Um, and just rear my head back. Guitar. Yes. I will remember your name. I will remember yours as well, Vod. Did you want a leech? And I, like, reach in and pull one out and hold it No. Up. No. You're welcome to it. It's like... No. Pearl, do you need a leech? No, I need a cup. Could I just have a cup? 
Yes. Burnt You're missing slides. out. I don't know, just take this, the cup. No, hold the cup. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Did you want me to put a leech in the cup for you? No, I just need the cup. You're welcome to have one. No! I have my own leeches. They're from the south. Oh, really? None of that. None of that. Are they salty. fresh? No, they're very dry. They're dry. Okay, I'm sorry. Is everyone eating leeches now? Is this a new fad that I've missed out on? No, but Is Pearl telling just, yeah. the truth about her leeches? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I roll a deception? Sure. <laughs> and then I get my D4 with it as well. 18. All right. Uh, and and Cathar, hit, let's uh, let's get your perception, pretty please, or your insight. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Not okay. quite enough. Uh, Pearl is telling the truth <clears throat> about the following things. She has leeches. They are from the south. They are dry. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, why do you have them? Medicinal purposes. Medicinal. I sense that we're going to need them later. Ah, uh, yes. They make for a good snack in an emergency. No, you let them bite <clears throat> you. They bite you. If they're dried, they can still bite. Yes, they're just a little bit dry. They're not moist and squiggly wiggly. They're just like, oh, look, I'm, I tried out, but I will still bite you and get all moist again. I, As leeches do. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I think you may have been sold faulty leeches, Pearl. No, no, I picked these myself. Oh, that explains it then. What do you mean? Well, I'd be happy to go leech hunting with you later and show you how to find good ones that don't dry out. Her ego is taking a beating, so <clears throat> she's gonna pull out her jar of leeches. <laughs> These are top quality leeches that I picked <sighs> myself. I know they're good. Look, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I am gonna lean in real close and like tap the glass. Are they nice and juicy? Oh, they're wet. They're fat and happy. Mm -hmm. They're squirming around all over. Well, those aren't dry at all, Pearl. They're drier than they were when I found them. In the water? In that, <laughs> yes, in a little mm. pond-like place. Yes, you should change the water regularly or else they will lose potency. No, these ones are great. They're very potent. I mean, no, they're disgusting. You don't want to touch these. They're gross and yucky and Would bitter. you like me to check them for mm. freshness? No, 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 they're fine, they're fine. There's only five of them. I've... Medicine, you... I... Oh... I'm sensing you're going to be in trouble later. You will need them later. It's uh, in the cards. You'll hold them I for can... later. Excellent. I will. I'll hold mine for later as well. Good yeah. idea. Yes, 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 <clears throat> yes. Well, we I... should probably go to the fishing store, shouldn't we? Uh, the the two figures that have been sitting and, and talking, one of them, the, the old woman, looks up and uh, and has been kind of listening to, to Leech talk uh, for a little while with this kind of puzzled, skeptical look <clears throat> on her face and and as you all kind of turn to, to head towards the door, she, she pops and says, Hey! Oh, yeah, yeah. You are looking for Triskin? You're looking for Triskin? Yes. All right, all right. Triskin's on the way to me shop. I'll take you, to, take you there. Oh, what do you sell at your shop? Uh, fish. I, I, I fish, and then I sell the fish. I'm a fisher. I kind of look at Pearl. <laughs> look back to this woman. Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you so much. She lies. She lies. 
With the eyes of a thousand eyes, she lies. Yes, Pearl, why don't we go find out how much of a liar she is? She plans to eat us. I know it. I know it for sure. I see it in the crystal ball. I can take my hand and I kind of push the crystal ball down. Um, maybe we can check the crystals later. I'm gonna saunter over to the old woman really quickly and I'm gonna just reach for her palm. Oh dear, dear. I see it. Your lifespan is running. Try. Try like my leeches. Oh. Three weeks. Oh. The leeches are actually quite moist. Don't worry. I, I saw the I saw the jar. Give my my hat back. I three weeks for the. <clears throat> what, what do you what, what, what do you mean three weeks? What, oh, you, have you ever heard you're going to die in seven days? Well, you're not, my dear. You'll die in three weeks. So I can do whatever I want for the next three weeks, and n- nothing bad will happen to me. Yes, yes. Oh, oh. Give you a piece of paper from the mayor that I work for for that, and then I'm just gonna quickly. I've already got papers signed yeah, yeah, yeah. by the mayor, ready to go. And so, you can do anything you want for a week. Close up your shop. Oh, three weeks. Sorry, three weeks. Wait, maybe we could. You could escort us to your shop before you close it down. How about? Uh, in your your rummaging, uh, I'm pretty sure you have to make a forgery check. Uh, so, it's probably not oh, by yeah. the name of forgery. It is probably under the umbrella of deception. Let me so, yeah. check what it is, because the it's because of my charlatan yeah. background, is it? Um, I mean, it would be your choice. Is it deception or is it sleight of hand? You can add a forgery. Yeah, so it, uh, it doesn't even say anything, so up to you what we... I I I'm I'll be happy to do deception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me a give me a deception check. Uh and if you like you can use dexterity as the uh that makes sense. Yeah. And then that 21. There you go. Uh she she takes the paper and 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 what does it say? What is what does the paper say? Dear old woman. <laughs> you Oh, most likely going to die in 21, 23, or 25 days. Do what you like, girly. Get out of there and close up your shop if you like. Find the mayor. But just the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> she, she takes his... This is very... St- the mayor, the mayor was just here. He would have mentioned, but uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take you to my shop. I'll sell you whatever fish you want, and and then I'll, I'll close up and and set about to my true passions, fishing. No, 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 no. How do you usually fish on a jet ski, perhaps? No, no, no. Jet skis is for tourists. I I, I use a boat. Tourists. <clears throat> No, t- tourists, you know, like you folks. People who come into town, oh. say hi to the lake monster, buy a sweatshirt, stay at the Green Swan Inn. Okay, yes, yes, you do that. But beware, there is a giant thousand-eyed sea monster in the lake. Is that thousand-eyed sea monster? I don't think the lake monster would like any other thing encroaching on its territory like that. Not so much, no. I, 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 I don't know so much about that. Have you ever seen the lake monster since we're already on this subject? Time or two, sure. Sure, it usually pops right. by. So, you know, it doesn't say much nothing, but it just looks at me with that big old eye. It's... When do you see the lake monster? Well, it's most common when I'm out fishing in the, in the hot season. Uh... I usually have to go out at night because them tourists are zip zapping along all over the place on them, them jet skis and the, the water skis and all, all that, folks. And it scares the fishes and the lake monsters busy, you know, being lurking and mysterious for them. But so I'll go out uh, at night and it'll, it'll, it'll emerge from the fog and, and loom over the boat and look down at me and I'll say to it, 
hello lake monster would you like some fish and and sometimes it wants some fish and sometimes it don't, it don't want fish and then it goes on its way interesting okay <clears throat> shall we go to the shop now yes yeah right, right, right this way uh what what are all your names just so as i know <laughs> my name or what can i call you you don't have to tell me your you look no, like no. one of them, I... one of them gals. okay yep i am vedania binyakhe alfebra janinia but you can call me that right Pod. all right Pod. Sorry. Uh, you may call me kithar kithar <clears throat> i i don't want to give you my name dear because you're going to die soon and it's I pearl her name is it's Pearl. Pearl. That's downright yes. that's downright strange and unkind to you, Pearl, but but okay. <gasps> well, alright, and she kinda creaks up and, and walks on Oh, my name's Beverly. Not that any of you asked. Uh strangers. Pearl. Yeah, well, well to meet you, Beverly. Yes, Beverly, nice to meet you. Charmed, I'm sure. <clears throat> uh, and she <laughs> she walks out of the, the green swan inn. Uh, and, and leads you around and walks down that pathway towards the lake uh, and are you going with her to her shop or like at a certain point along the way that there's uh, uh, Triskin's shop uh, my, my shop's just over here if and you wanted to, to come in and look at the fish is Triskin's shop like lit and appearing to be open uh, you, you you see the front of it, and no, the door is shut. It's dark on the inside. Uh, the blinds are drawn. Do you have a cat, Beverly? Me? Uh, no, no, I I, I don't have a don't have a <clears throat> cat. <gasps> Why? It's just just as I thought. <gasps> no, I won't it? say. I won't ruin your three weeks. Is. Is there a, a cat in town that uh, uh, looks similar to? And I will describe the cat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Triskin's cat. Mean, mean little thing it is. Hmm. Is does it come to your shop very often? Oh, I, of a of an afternoon, I gotta I gotta chase it out. It wants fish. Ah uh, <gasps> yes cats like a fish that makes sense or well, i suppose maybe we should go to your shop since it seems like tristan is still not home still uh, not in his shop tristan <clears throat> tristan's got it like most of the folks around here that we got we we live under under our shops for the most part it's a small town there's there's not not a lot and you're i, I don't know why you're here now it's raining it's raining to beat the band but I yeah mean, right right this way right this way okay uh, and you you walk just a little further on uh, up to a a building that stands at the like the base of a pier that extends out into the water, uh, and you can see down at the end of the pier a boat bobbing about. Uh, and Tris, or, uh, Beverly, you know, walks up to her to her shop and opens the door and steps in and kind of uh, and some torches uh, light K on. Kithar like pushes past her as soon as she opens the door. Sure. Oh, it's nice to get indoors and away from all of that wet. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite wet when it's ra raining out. Yeah. yeah, yes, that's what I meant. Uh, okay. Uh, the inside of the shop is uh, lined with open crates, kind of all over, that are uh, overflowing with uh, dried fish of a couple different varieties. So, where is he? Who, what? Who, who's he? Uh, you talking uh, about the cat? Trisket. Oh, Trisket? Yes. Uh, probably, probably back at his shop. You this said, is my, this is my store. You said he was it's, coming here. Well, oh, the the cat does. No. The cat. No, at. No, oh, Beverly. At the. At the green. Swan, you said that Tris 
Duncan was coming to your shop. No, he's, he's, oh, oh, <clears throat> when I say he's on the way to my shop, I mean, when we're walking to my shop, the place that he is, is on the way. Oh, right. this town with all of its charm is really growing on me. We're all in grave danger. Um, do you have any yes. fish bait? F fish bait? Uh, I mean, you could cut up some of this. Yeah, yes, I do have fish bait. What, what do you find uh, is the most delectable to the fish? Uh, they, uh, they, they seem to like uh, bits of other fish. Uh, I don't go in for, for Triskin's uh, fancy magical baits and hooks and all that stuff. I don't need none of that performance-enhancing equipment. No, I, I just go in for good old-fashioned. Uh, I'll chum the water a little bit. I'll, I'll cast my lines, and and they just they just come come right to me. Back home, they go for these, and I'll pull up the jar of uh, nightcrawlers. You don't you don't uh, fish with these. I mean, I would. I they're I don't I. I don't think I haven't had night crawlers. I haven't bothered to to get any in some time. Would I'm you like it. one? No, no, no. Thank you. I I, I just ate at the bar. It's all right. Well, more no, no. more for me. <laughs> Earthy. Well, listen. Um, I, do y'all want to buy some fish? Some some dried fish. I got some fresh fish in the back. No, uh, thank you. I am Well, I, I believe that our transactions are currently uh, being billed to the mayor as we are on his payroll. <clears throat> I think you've scammed us. What? Well, I haven't... You haven't given me anything. <laughs> no, you've done tricks, you've done tomfoolery, and you've done stunts to get us here in your shop. You've got a hidden agenda, darling. Would you... Would you like to leave? I thought you were yes. selling us fish. Uh, if you don't want, if the answer's no, the answer's no. You can go. I don't have to sell you. But I'll, I've got the fish. If you don't want fresh fish, I'm just going to dry it before it spoils. Pooh's going to run to the door. And is it a push or a pull door? Uh, it <laughs> is a pull door since you're inside. Okay, she's going to push on it. <laughs> we're locked in. We're locked in. <laughs> death comes. Death comes. <laughs> Listen, you're all you're all right. You're all right. The, you, the door, it don't. It's not locked. It don't. I didn't. I didn't even unlock it. I left it unlocked. You're not. It's. I didn't use a key or nothing when I came. But pull, lady. Pull the door. Oh, oh, oh. it's fine. Everybody was a pull. Was a pull. Was a pull. Oh. That seems like something that someone who can see the future would have known. No, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see it coming. Because you were going. Now listen, I, I I'm I'm a I, I'm a gonna take a nap. If you if you folks want to buy fish or to talk to me, please don't want to talk to me. Uh, <laughs> just just like holler and and yell out for Beverly, uh, and then wait, and maybe I'll show up. Uh, okay. Um, uh, thank, thank you, you Beverly. Beverly. Uh, you're you're welcome. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll bill the mayor for any any fish you take if, if you want. Yes, quite. Uh, Are there like any um, shiny fish hooks? Uh, no, there's there's, it's all fish on here. There's no mm. obvious fishing equipment or nets or any of that. That's just stuff. fish. Just fish. Okay. I'm just gonna walk past Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, open the door. <laughs> yep. And I, so you said that the crates are open, right? Yep. There are some closed, but there are a ton of open crates with dried fish in. Are there small ones? Some small ones going around? Sure, yeah, yeah. Some of the higher shelves have, like, very small crates that are exactly one fish size. That kind of thing. I, I, so, for you to send home I, to family. <laughs> 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 I want to... Um, open up my bird cage and let one of the painted black pigeons fly out and get a, a fish and then I want to call it back in <gasps> but I want to try and make a scene I want to kind of drop my glass ball on the ground oh Beverly look Beverly Beverly look 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 Beverly oh. she like stops as she's walking to like a door behind a counter and she's like what, 
Oh, why is there a bird in here? What's what? Did you did, did, close that door? Let you let a bird in. It's not a bird. It's family. Wow. What? Look! Look at look at the ball on the ground. What? Okay. And she's like looking at your crystal ball. Is it's a crystal ball? Is you're a, you're a seer, right? I see the crystal ball. What? Yeah. Yes, yes, Beverly, yes. Did my bird get a fish? Yeah, 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 yeah. Your bird. <laughs> so your bird. You have the option. Your bird can either have flown over over to grab a loose dried fish, mm -hmm. or can have grabbed a very small box with a something, presumably a fish, inside. Okay, so it's got two other friends, a raven and another black painted pigeon, all so we're going to take gonna the box. Something. Yeah, all right. they all... So, <clears throat> as a team, they flutter out. The actual raven's in charge, right? I just have yeah, to ask. I okay. Mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they, they, in a flying in formation, go over to a, to a, a box, probably eight-inch cube, uh, and they, they each kind of grab it and flutter back into the cage and drop the box in the cage and then go back up onto their perch while beverly's like yeah it's a crystal you dropped your crystal ball you should pick it up don't leave that in here i don't want it i feel like can you help me pick it up i'll say as i'm also reaching for it beverly help beverly listen you folks could you help her out um i i i don't know what's going on i'm gone and <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 so it's just you, just Beverly and Pearl in the shop. Yeah, 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 Pearl, I'll give you a hand, but you really got to get out of here. I need to take a nap. And so she's going to reach down to grab the, the crystal ball. Our hands are going to touch. Uh-huh. And I'm just going to freak out. <gasps> what? Two weeks and six days. You, you robbed me of a day, you some bitch. What happened? Fate, fate happened, my dear. Fate. I don't goodbye, know. Waverly. Go goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm just gonna go out. Stop. And then I'll be like, I got us fish. Thank you, Pearl. That is exactly what we need, fish. <laughs> me too. Think about it. There is a mm -hmm. sea monster. Yes. If we ever get in trouble in peril, in pearl, pearl in peril, we could throw the fish as a distraction. I or have a feeling the creature. To... Yeah. She said it likes to be given fish as a gift. So you're standing at a pier outside of Beverly's fish shop, uh, and uh, you can see kind of a little further away from the lake, mm. uh, the shop that she identified as Triskin's. Uh, still dark, but, you know. Uh, and there's a couple other buildings uh, uh, scattered around. As we were watching all of this happen from outside, it was a bit distracting, but now that we are back on task, Cathar is going to suddenly notice that they're standing next to the water and go, okay, let's go, and start walking back up the hill. I, um, message Pearl, um, and you can't reply to this, by the way, I can only just message you, but, <clears throat> um, Cathar is afraid of the water, I believe. Oh, I know. It's because he's going to drown! I'll just, <laughs> I'll yell she out so you can hear. <laughs> I, he jumps again. It's just this way. <laughs> just follow along, just like oh my gosh, Pearl, why? <laughs> you watch one of my eyes turn around and look at you <laughs> as I continue to walk away, like I am tracking you. Uh, uh, point of clarification, uh, Kendra. Mm. Your uh, the the feature that gives you the ability to message yeah. people does it let you it does it just give you message as a cantrip? So it's called arcane empathy, and it lets my sensitivity to the flow of magic lets me speak to the hearts of others. Um, you have the ability to connect, communicate telepathically with those within thirty feet of you. <clears throat> um, though this grants the target no ability to respond telepathically. They can understand you as long as you share a language with them. Cool. I ask because technically message does let them respond. Right, yeah, yeah that's why cool. it's like a yeah. little tricky. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
cool, cool, cool. Great. Uh, so, Cathar, you're walking back in the direction you came, like back towards the uh, the Green Swan Inn. No, t- toward the other shop. Towards Triskin. Yeah. 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 All right. So you're you're there almost immediately. It's very nearby, uh, and you're you're now standing outside of of the the shop. It has a has a sign up front that says uh, uh, enchantments, essentially. This is not a fishing supply shop. Um. All right. I I try the door. It's not locked. I open the door. You go on in. It's it's unlocked. There is a a, a dark uh, gray blue cat sitting on the counter. Uh, I found the cat. Uh, is it lit at all? Uh, it's. There are no light sources inside, but enough light is filtering in from outside that it's not like obscured or anything. It's just kind of a little dim. Are there unlit light sources? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna look around and see if there's any sign of anyone. Uh, the The walls are bedecked with uh, a wide variety of different fishing implements, nets and rods, and uh, <clears throat> tackle boxes and bait and hooks and just anything that you could think of and a couple of things you can't identify. There's like a sextant on the wall for some reason. Uh, yep. And the whole while while you're looking around, this this cat is sitting on the counter just kind of looking at you with its head cocked. Can I approach the cat and see if it is arcane in nature? Like maybe Certainly. It's... Would you like to do an Arcana check or use some other kind of feature or ability? I'm going to use Arcana check. Um, I assume this isn't forbidden knowledge. Correct. Well, not. Nah, take it. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, take your, yeah, take your proficiency die. Uh, horrible Um, I did that add my proficiency? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. It, it added so, the d4. Eleven. Sort of. Uh, With the kind of eye contact that the cat has been making with you, there's something about it, but... eh. Uh, Upon being examined closely by you, where you kind of get in and and really kind of give this cat a once-over, and it watches you kind of disdainfully as you you do so, uh, as soon as you, you realize, like, I think I've gotten everything I can out of this cat, um, it it chirps uh, and hops down on the far side of the counter away from you, uh, and you hear like a the uh, a gentle rustling, uh, and you, you don't see the cat anymore. Can I look to where it jumped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you lean over back behind the counter and you look and you can see that behind it there there is another door to maybe a back area of the shop. And down low, there is a cat flap. Oh. And you would imagine that the, the gently swinging cat flap that you see is probably where it went. I'm just going to yell out, Hello? Is anybody home? Yes. <laughs> I'm behind you. <laughs> Anyone but Pearl? <laughs> Um, uh, yes, and I Qatar. <laughs> Anybody but Qatar and Pearl, please save me. I'm here. I'm. Hold on. I I forgot to lock it. I'm I'm not open. Give me a second. I'll open up. Uh, and you you hear rummaging <clears throat> and and then some footsteps, uh, rhythmic like on stairs. Uh, and then the the door through which the cat disappeared opens up, uh, and out steps a very familiar half elf uh, to you. You recognize him as the the person from your your vision of the scroll, uh, and uh, he- hello, what um, welcome? I don't recognize any of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello. We are here to deliver a package that is waiting for you by the end. A package. It's a very large rock troll. 
Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, excellent. I was beginning to get worried that they had been waylaid by trolls or something along the way. May I ask, what exactly is that skeleton? Well, what's what skeleton? What skeleton? The one traveling with the troll and the scroll. Yes. Oh, um, I'm, I'm not... I, I don't really... I just ordered delivery. I, I don't know. You don't know what you ordered? Why, well, I, I ordered a, a rock troll. I believe his name is Mr. Gilbert, and he comes highly recommended. Are you buying and selling rock trolls? Renting? In, I, I'm hiring on the services of a rock... Can you imagine a better person to keep an eye on the shop while I am away than something that does not need to sleep or eat or breathe? I'm not sure he can fit in this room. Yeah. I have one question. Is that not slavery? I'm paying him. How much? Out, out of interest. <laughs> I, I don't... I, let's see, it was 500 gold up front for a year. Uh, and then expenses as needed. Slave labor. Right. Now I understand what this town is about. Pun Town. Maybe they should call it Swampville or something oh. like Bitch Dale. Oh. Eight hundred, or us. Or I'll us I'll read what? your future. I will tell you. I will change your fate. I will say that you should probably not let her anywhere near you. Okay. <clears throat> and and Triskin kind of like steps a little bit back even further from the uh, the counter that he's standing behind. What? L listen, I... If... Gil this is bizarre. If Gilbert has a problem with, with our agreement, I'm perfectly happy to revisit it with him. Who are you, and what are you doing in my shop? Here's my credentials. One moment. What's today's date? Uh, it's the... It's the 7th of Partoon. 7th of Partoon. I have been sent here by the mayor to make sure you are following proper employment laws. Okay, but this time you're going to roll me a sleight of hand check <laughs> and a deception check. The sleight of hand check to get away with filling that out while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so that's the sleight of hand. Uh-huh. And then our deception is 19. 19 on the deception. Okay. Um. What? What? This the ink is still wet. How did you? <laughs> when did the mayor sign this? What? I. He signed it. The mayor. Yeah. Before when we were, we were in bar. Because he's he's commissioned me to be some sort of commissioner of the employment sort, and I it's wet still because well it's raining outside you oh, goose. It's raining still, yes. of course it is. Uh, and um, the date. Okay. Um. Well. Uh. Well, you're auditing it. Um. Yes. Yes. Now you know. What I request, or you'll be fined. You can either pay the rock troll 800 of gold, or you can pay him 500, and then we'll fine you 800 of gold. By the mayor. Through him. I think what? I should go and get our rock troll friend now that we found who he was looking for. Mm -hmm. would, would, would you please? I, I would love to, to talk to him. Um, I'll leave the two of you discussing, and then I'm gonna walk out. Uh, you, you step out of Triskin's shop uh, and bump into uh, the skeleton's outstretched hand, who is holding the scroll uh, with the name, uh, and and Gilbert is is standing behind the, the skeleton. Oh, have you found? Is this um, the skeleton started walking, and I fall. I have I followed him. That was very wise of you, Gilbert. Um, I grab the scroll and pocket it. 
Um, yes, we found your your employer. Uh, is that the correct mm-hmm. relationship? Okay. I believe that there is a crazy woman in there trying to renegotiate your contract. You may oh, or may oh. not want to do something about that. Oh, oh, oh <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, um, employer is, is the right term. Think of, think of me as, as like a, a very purpose, uh, a very picky mercenary, we'll say. Uh, I don't have any reason to think of you one way or the other. You've been quite okay. pleasant to me, but I don't want you to lose your job because of her, so... I haven't even got my job yet. I haven't even started. Perhaps and if Gilbert you just crouch kind of, down. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's what he does. Is he, he crouches down and kind of kind of pulls the the door open. Oh, he- hello. Uh, and uh, Pearl, you and Triskin turn and see the the large head looming in in the doorway to the shop. Uh, he- hello. Yes, just come in. Come in. No. We were just talking about you. No, no, I don't fit. You fit. Make it just squeeze, squeeze. Uh, uh, are are you are are you Triskin? And Triskin goes, y- yes, yes, you must be Gilbert. Excellent, yes. Um, welcome. Uh, I was, this. Uh, we can talk about what our arrangement is in in a moment. Um, would you please, please not force your way into my shop? And Gilbert goes, I. It's the door. I don't fit. Right, so you're not even going to provide him shelter. Right. Triskin. Tris- Triskin says, uh, Gilbert, what what can I... I will provide to you anything that you ask in terms of shelter and payment and and provision. Anything you want. Name it. I will, I will move heaven and earth. I will bankrupt my shop. I will go into debt. I will make available to you anything that you ask. And Gilbert goes, Oh, and he thinks for a minute. He goes, "I think I'd like, um, I think I'd like to be allowed to stand outside your shop, uh, and I think you should pay me five hundred gold for for doing that." Wait, Gilbert, are you aware that minimum wage in Puzzle Town is two gold per day, four gold per public holiday, and then five gold for birthdays? You should be getting eight hundred gold, Gilbert. And by accepting any less than 800 gold, you will be setting a standard that people should be working for 300 gold per less an annual. Well, I don't... Oh, oh, okay, um, Triskin, can I have 800 gold? And Triskin goes, yes! Well, I'm glad we got that sorted. While all this was going on, can I have been like snooping around for any like Absolutely. valuable like forbidden knowledge? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll break it up. We'll break the shop up into like three main zones, right? Okay. We'll talk about the stuff that's on the walls, yeah. miscellaneous fishing equipment with some like signs yeah. identifying what they are, the area behind the counter, like in the counter on, on the far side of it, and through the door that Triskin came out through. If, of those three, do any pique your fancy? I, uh, okay. I'm smart. A smart person wouldn't go into the back room with the cat in there because I still don't trust that cat. So I'll give you I three. will look behind the counter. All right. Give me, a, give me an investigation check. Um, and let me make sure... No, okay. 17. Uh, you find... You know, you're rifling through, and you find a little cash box that's locked at the moment. Uh, a ledger book, uh, and a couple of, uh, loose sheafs of notes, uh, that as you quickly leaf through them, uh, you can see our, uh, kind of basic instructions, reminders uh, for uh, a couple of common enchantments. 
uh, and you find an arcane focus. Uh, it's a it's a small pyramid of, of uh, it's like sapphire blue crystal, maybe an inch. Ooh, on a side. I take that. Okay. I get it. <laughs> and then uh, I just go when I pocket that. I kind of realize that there's probably nothing back here worth my interest, and I'm not going to risk going to the back room. So I'll just kind of lean on the counter, waiting for these negotiations to end. Uh, and just as you kind of straighten up and are leaning, are you leaning on the like employee side of the counter watching this? No, I'll door? go. Okay, I'll go right. on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> just check it. Uh, and as you as you like settle yourself nonchalantly up against the the counter, uh, that's when Tristan goes, "Yes, uh, and and you, can I interest you in uh, uh, information? Information, yes. yes, certainly, certainly, yes. Specifically on the monster that resides in the lake." Yes, just a second. I need to check a note because I think something is true about this person. Different person. Oh, the lake monster. Oh, certainly it's 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 quite the quite the fun um, little attraction in town, isn't it? Uh, have you seen it? Okay, let's cut to the chase. I don't want what the tourists want. I want the truth. The, the truth about yes. as a pr pr proprietor of the arcane nature you should I would hope that we would share the same appreciation <clears throat> for those of creatures and power and knowledge so from magic user to magic user what What's going on with the monster lake? What's going on? Is it real? Make me a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> I think I have. Okay. Twenty five. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, Triskin Triskin says, "Like, well, magic user to magic user. I know that that we share a bond, and we need to really look out for each other, and, and, and not do each other any, you know, any harm or, or uh, any, any ill ill actions. So, uh, I I will let you know that I I don't think that." The lake monster that they picture on the the sweatshirts and the lunch boxes and, and all that stuff in the gift shop, I don't think it's it's completely anatomically accurate to to the lake monster. I, I think that it's it's like a, a cartoon version of it. Pearl, did you hear? What you saw may have been true. Oh, true. Yes, it was. How does one meet, uh, see the lake monster? I heard uh, at night when fishing is a possibility. Is there a way to call for it or to investigate more closely? Um, uh, the lake monster, the, the lake monster is a pretty good sport about uh, showing up when, when the tourists buy the, the, the tour. Um, mm, the see, mm -hmm. see the lake monster on the on the Puddle Town Lake. Um, other than that, it's it kind of comes and goes as it pleases. It does like fish, I hear. Beverly has said as much. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't go out on the lake much. I, I, I enchant the fishing stuff for, for people to take out for a day and catch their fill, and then they, they bring it back. And that's, I, I'm not big on lakes. I just like enchanting stuff and hanging out with my asshole cat. Well, thank you for this knowledge. 
And I believe we delivered... So you really don't know what's going on with... And I point to the skeleton outside. You really don't know anything about that. Uh, no, um... Oh, uh, oh, oh, one, one second, one second. And the Triskin rummages around in his pockets. He pulls out a notebook and he opens up and he leafs through it. He pulls a loose piece of paper out of it. And he, <clears throat> uh, thank you. And. Uh, thank you, Avray's delivery service. I have received my order. And uh, with that, the skeleton kind of clatters and falls down into a small pile of bones sitting on the ground just outside the shop. Wow. It is dead. I, I think it was before. Yeah, well, it's been dead for a while. The gift, you have it too? Do you have a gift for me? Yes. Give me a hand. Give me your hand. Hold on just one second. Thank you. No! You're in grave danger. Uh-huh. The whole town is in danger, Pearl. I feel like you need to come up with a new peril or something. Could you ever give good fortune? What, you gave me such good fortune. What happened between then and now? Oh, fate happened. Destiny happened. I can give you a good fortune. When you die, it won't be as painful as you think it would be. Pearl, I am so happy to have known you. I <laughs> say as I'm walking out of the shop to go find Cathar. Did none I mean, of you want to buy fishing equipment? <clears throat> it's it's no. enchanted. No? Oh, okay. I mean, do you have enchanted fish that could bring about the monster to the surface? Um, let me think. Okay, that would be that would be a variant on on bait. But I w it would have to be for something that I'm not sure exactly what it is. So I have to... Uh... Oh, we know what it is. Pearl, can you describe it again? It was green and had a thousand legs and an eye. I thought it had many eyes. And what oh, about a scale? thousand... One leg and one thousand eyes. With the not tentacles involved. Tentacles! There was one leg, a thousand tentacles, and also a thousand eyes. One for each tentacle on the end. Of the... And it had a mouth. You know this already, though, because you know it has a true form, and that's the true form. And it's green and black. That doesn't sound like any anything that I've ever heard of. Um, I I guess I can I can look at some of my other notes on on aquatic creatures and see if I can figure that out. I tell you what, um, I'll I'll work on it, uh, and I'm for sure gonna have to stop by uh, the apothecaries to get some some supplies for this. Uh, can you give me some money for materials to make this bait? You can put it on the mayor's tab. The mayor's tab? Yes. Oh. Yes. Excellent. Um, you know, thinking about it, I'm going to need at least 300 gold worth of materials. So uh, I'll just I'll just charge the mayor for that. No problem. Oh, it's the mayor. Okay, well, um... And if anyone asks, <laughs> this was on... <laughs> The behest of our amphibian friend outside, <clears throat> he's very shy and he did not want to ask himself, so. What, what, who, who, what is, what Elizabeth is this? Cathar. Cathar. Yes. Who okay. is clearly not an amphibian. I just want to make <laughs> it clear. <laughs> clearly <laughs> not. <laughs> You're really My not a fish knowledge. person. No. <laughs> They're disgusting and slimy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Sounds to me like you're telling me about fish. Is there anything about fish I'm not allowed to know? Race is no, gonna it's be all racist. totally That's open all public say. knowledge. I don't care. <laughs> oh, um, I've got 
One other thing. Do you have floaties? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can I can rent you floaties. Um what would Can we you, purchase them? Because I don't know with what we're going to be facing if we're going to be able to bring them back. Yes, I will let you purchase them. But do know that they are only going to be magical for about a day. Okay. What kind of what kind of magic is on them that lets them float? Well, um, if uh, and and here, let me show you. And he walks over to a rack of of floaties. There's there's some that look like uh, kind of a vague uh, sauropod head, like just kind of a long neck, and then a, a diamond shaped head and and a ring. These these are also sort of modeled after the the lake monster. And there's a duck and there's a swan. And these ones in particular, generally the most popular enchantment that that people get on them is uh, ordinarily just a normal floaty. But if you want, you can you can do this. And, and he reaches over to the duck's beak and, like, squeezes it, and it goes, Wah! uh And doing that will actually let you walk on water for a while. So if you're in trouble, you're real tired, you, you like, slip or something, and you don't want to swim back, you just, Wah! uh And then you can walk on the surface back to the back to shore. Ah, uh, yes. This right here, Vard, this is what the mayor told us to come and get. This one here that is, looks exactly like the sea monster, and she's going to point to the duck. Oh, okay, I thought the mayor had you come here to, to audit my completely consensually entered into business agreement with someone, but here, if also there's something to do with the duck, uh, here, also, I'll... Put it on Cathar's, the mayor's tab? The mayor's yes, tab. Do. Yes. Okay. Cathar slash the mayor's Cathar tab. Cathar slash the mayor. Would you, you're, I, I don't, you're, I, you seem new in town, so I'm just going to say, you know that, that your Cathar is not the mayor. You're aware of that? I just need to establish that very clearly from the outset. Well, <laughs> this is news to me. Okay, I'm going to need 400 gold from you then. No, I he guess, is. I just, he's, we know he's not the mayor. Okay, yes. you've you've met the mayor. You've talked to the mayor. You have an arrangement yes. with the. Yes. Okay, okay, uh, very very well. Um, in, enjoy. Do, how many do you do you want? Three or four or we, five floaties? Wait a second. Um, we only need one. Okay, okay. Here, here you go. Okay. And does it blow up itself? Oh. Oh, oh, oh it's inflated. It's like oh, okay. already inflated. It's already inflated. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to put it on my shoulder. You know what? Actually, I think the mayor wanted two. So can we take one more, please? Sure. Yeah. So also Thank a duck. You. We've got a couple colors. Yes. You've got a yellow duck. Would you like a... a we've got green, pink, blue. Uh, oh. I, can, I can make it different colors if you want. Can you make it all the colors? Sure, yeah. Do you okay, want them, I'll take that one. Do you want the colors to cycle, or do you want to, it to yes. be all the colors at once? Okay, you want it to cycle. All right, just one second. Okay. And he, he pulls down uh, a, a green duck and sets it on the counter and walks behind and bends down and, and behind the counter for a second. And... Uh-huh. Uh... And he pops up looking kind of sheepish. Um... Why don't you, um, this is going to take me a minute. You should come back, uh, uh Oh, it's later, fine. Tomorrow. It's fine. I'll take it just as is. Oh, okay. I Thank you. I've actually gotten my work journal that the mayor actually wanted three. And three. one of them is a pink, white, and blue duck. Pink, white, and blue? Yes. Uh, so I, okay, full disclosure. Um, magic user to magic user. <laughs> I have misplaced my arcane focus. Um, I'm oh, not sure. I think it's in the back, you... probably. I'm, I must have yes. brought it in the back with me. Or um, the, the cat likes to, like, bat it around just to mess with me. Real real jerk, that, that yes. thing. She's mine. Cats, can we? Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Yes. yes. Um, so I'll hold on to this for a day, and then I'll be attuned to it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll enchant up a a, a duck for you to pick up um, after I, you know, 
sleep with this under my pillow for eight hours. A day? Yeah. It takes... <laughs> it takes you a day to paint some floaties. Oh, you just want it painted? I don't have paint. I was going to do magic. Is, it, is the magic not in the paint? <clears throat> well, the, the fact that there is no paint... Uh, but we've got this one that works, right? It's all magic... magic yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. The standard 24 hours, they won't puncture, and then you can activate it and be able to walk on water for 20 minutes. See, Pearl, just the two will be fine. Thank you for your time. We will see you around. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm just and gonna grab my fully and walk out. Do you want and find Cathar? Do you wanna take the with you or, or shall I just hold on to this pearl? Um gesticulating with the crystal ball. I've got four more. I'd still like that pink, white, and blue floaty, please. Oh, okay, I'll I'll work on that and I'll work on bait to summon the lake monster. Um and I guess stop by tomorrow? Or, you know what? I'm gonna go out on a wild limb and say you're staying at the Green Swan Inn. Is that, is that right? You do have the gift. I'll come there when I've got that taken care of and find you there or leave it there with Barkeep, okay? I'm having a vision. <laughs> oh no. Your eyes are open. <clears throat> You are in terrible danger. What are you going to do to me? Is that a Not threat? me. <laughs> Not me. I would never threaten anyone unless it comes down to employment law. Which is my other job. There's a lot of jobs. You, you were... It's actually you... tiring. I, 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 I can imagine. Um, what... What 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 is the nature of the danger I'm in? Probably murder or accidents or fraud or burglary or something to do with the color blue. I'm gonna get murdered and then I'm gonna get hurt in an accident and then someone's gonna steal from me and then I'm gonna have something blue happen to me and it'll be bad. Or your blue cat is a murderer, and you're going to get in an accident where you trip over the cat, fly over the dock, under the jetty, and into the monster's mouth. Oh. I... That'll be completely unheard of. I, I, I've never heard of the lake monster ever hurting anybody. Oh. Ask a far. He knows. I, ask... Who? I'm sorry. Who? Exactly. <sighs> okay, I'm closed. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you at the Green Swan with your stuff. Uh, maybe in a day, maybe in more. When I go outside to find Cathar, I just want to put the floaty over him. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you step out, Cathar, you hear, like, the, the shop door open. I've just been having a polite conversation with my friend, the rock troll. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you've been going back and forth with Gilbert, and it's very polite, uh, and then, thump, all of a sudden, there's a, there's a floaty kind of what did you do to your, me? your arms. Um, help, help, I'm trapped, what in the world? Oh, it seems that you... And Gilbert will reach out with one hand and like slide the floaty up off of you. Thank it you, seems Gilbert. That you you got captured by a duck. Those are water birds. Quack. Oh, <laughs> it goes quack. Damn it, Gilbert! What? What? I didn't break it. It's fine. You know it's what? It's fine. It's I'm... <laughs> You can have it, Gilbert. Maybe oh. I bet it will make a good hat. That's exactly what Gilbert was going to do, is place it on his head. It makes a nice little tiara. Uh, and it's the green one that, that you got, uh, un, un recolored. Not uh, recolored, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, it's now sitting on his head. So that took an awfully long time, much more time than it probably should have. Uh, did Pearl hurt him in any way? Emotionally or physically? Uh, Spiritually. Sure, all of the above. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is um, probably me. Hmm. Hmm. Did we scam him how to... Like yes. Six hundred dollars. Yes, we need to go. <laughs> hmm. Yes, before he catches on. Yep. <laughs> well, you find yourself standing kind of on the pathway that runs through town. Uh, Cathar has situated himself with his back to the lake, uh, so he sees looking forwards the uh, the Green Swan Inn that that y'all have been at. Uh, and a, a couple other uh, buildings in between. Um, should we see if our rooms have been made ready yet? Yes. Um, I... Yes, we should probably see if our rooms are ready. I would also... I mean, he's conjuring some bait for the sea monster and I think I'm going to have to be scammed into going on this lake tour so <sighs> yes I there just... does seem to be a lot yeah, of uh, dishonesty going on around town lately um, since we arrived it seems yes quite <clears throat> mm. yeah. Pearl I would think that you would have warned us about it because you you know, you would have I seen did. it coming. I did. Did I you? Think we're all in very great danger. From well, dishonesty. Yeah, that's, you know, you need to choose your verbiage more carefully because you say you're in grave danger to everyone and then follow it up with you're going to die. So we automatically assume when you say you're in grave danger, we're going to die. It's so maybe if it's... My book. <clears throat> I'm sorry? You're in grave danger. By Perlina Perlescent. You wrote a book. Yes, of all the grave dangers one can face. Robbery, tomfoolery, sharks, leeches, me, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely, probably should be high on the list. Murder, arson, and also tricks. Hmm. But dishonesty, did that make the list? Dishonesty is number 37. Right. And that's a lie, because it's number 52. <laughs> I feel, um, in such grave danger. Yes. <clears throat> a nap would be nice. Yeah, nap. Maybe we work on our people skills. I find some tobacco, because I have a sudden urge to take up bad habits. I don't know why. Would you, I can help with the people's skills. Would you like a nightcrawler? No. No, thank you. Really hits the spot when you want to do mm -hmm. something that feels a little bit naughty. I... Very rich. Nope. I do not eat bugs, thank you. Oh, it's not a bug, it's a worm. It's a completely different family of, of creatures. I do not eat anything that comes alive and out of the ground, Kava. But you eat things that were put in the ground that are dead? Yeah, like potatoes or vegetables. They're alive. But not in... No, they're not. I, I am very much certain that if you were to plant a potato again, it would sprout into a whole new plant. So it's definitely alive. But I've, not I've in seen the my Nana where do it many, many you times. If you... Oh, it's out of the ground. You've clearly never had a home garden. Trust me. They fight. They fight. It's it's a struggle to grow a garden and get a good crop every year. I have a little little thing. A night a little night fellow. I'm sorry. Could could I have a night a little night fellow? Oh, you would like one of the night crawlers, absolutely! Yes, and he yes, holds yes. the jar out to you. 
I'm just gonna flick it around and feed it to my bird. Can I have one of your leeches? <clears throat> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just gonna. And you can. He grab... he sticks a finger into the jar and sort of swirls it around until one of them latches on, and then it pulls it out and just sucks it off his finger. Excellent. Not dry at all. Uh, as I'm you're like gagging you're in the corner at this. <laughs> uh, as this is going, as this conversation is going on, uh, the the sun has continued through the sky, and it is edging on into night. The the sun has started to set, and the uh, a fog has begun to roll in uh, off of the lake, and it's slowly crept up uh, on you where you're standing, and and kind of just gently rolls along the ground past you out away from the lake. Is it still is raining? This... Oh, yeah. And does this fog seem like... Not unnatural because it's a foggy lake or anything, but does it seem like the timing of it, or does it seem like any way arcane in nature? <clears throat> Give me an arcana check! Oh. I, I would also take a nature check if you'd rather, but I don't imagine you'd rather. Uh, nope, I would rather not. Thank you. <laughs> Not big on the world. <laughs> nope. Oh, and that's a six, so... Considering that potatoes aren't alive. <laughs> uh, when when the sun sets, fog rolls in off the yeah. lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knew? With, with a six, uh-huh. You got the nature response anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... I don't know about any of you, but I need a roaring fireplace, a hot bath, and a warm bed to sleep in. Yes, that sounds <clears throat> nice. I need the same also. I think the inn is that way. Yeah, you can you can see it from where you're standing. It's it's just a, a bit of a ways off. It's really not that far. It's a small town. And the fog isn't so thick that we can't see. Uh, it's a low-lying fog oh, okay. at the moment. Okay. Um, right. If you if you're bold enough to look back in the direction of the lake, maybe nope. you could learn more about. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's 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 a low-lying fog at the moment. You bet. I'm gonna stay at the bar until it closes. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Thanks, the mayor. <laughs> Thanks, uh, the mayor. <laughs> is is that what you do? You, you head back to the bar and and pop in, see what's going on? Talk to mm -hmm. Mr. Keep. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I you, want to book a monster tour. You you step back into the into the bar and Barky says, Oh! Excellent! You're back! Three rooms, I presume? Yes, thank you. Yes. Room and board and yes. very good. And he, he throws a key to each of you. It's just upstairs. Anything uh I can have food brought yes. Um, I would like to book a private tour well I'll look to the two people I'm with. Um I would like to book a tour for the lake monster. At night. A night tour of the certainly, yes. certainly. Your arrangement with the with the mayor has has it includes such services. Certainly. Um, would you like jet ski or water ski? <laughs> the jet skis. I will take three jet skis, please. Oh, all three of you are going. Fantastic. Yes. All right. Wait. Where? Um, what are we doing? Where are we going? You're going on a tour of the lake. You're going to see the lake monster. No, I'm not. Two, then. <laughs> what, It'll you want... be fine. We should all go together. The, the jet skis are very safe. You, you're in no mm -hmm. danger there unless you decide that you want to, like, crash into each other or something. Or, really, that's... That's pretty much it. They're, they're fairly docile. Uh, I'm very much not interested in going out onto so much water. Well, far be it for me to force you. That's, that's quite <clears> alright. <throat> yes, exactly. 
Vod, you wouldn't try to force me out on the water after injuring me only hours previously, would you? Did I tell you about how she kicked me over and stepped on me as she was walking into town? She did, did she? She did. Is she that did. where? Is that why you're all so you're muddy and there's that hole in your Do cloak? You see, look right there, right there. Uh, the nerve. my neck is still sore. Uh, well, um, perhaps if your your neck is still. Uh, bothering you in the in the morning, you can you can stop by the uh, apothecary and and get yourself a, a healing potion or, or something to to soothe the the pain, assuage your aches. That sounds like a wonderful idea, but I would take a hot bath if one is, is available tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll have one. We'll have one set up uh, to your room. And would you like to leave your your cloak? Uh, with with me down here, uh, we can have it mended and cleaned for you in the morning. Excellent, thank you so much. Yeah. Any allergy requirements that I should be aware of? Um, do you require unscented or? Uh... Um, yeah. uh, Castile soap only, please. Ah, yes, yes. Understood. Understood. Uh, and none of that fancy stuff with the gold flecks mixed in. I I have an allergy to precious metals. Oh, my condolences. <clears throat> well, um, yes, yes. Certainly, it'll be very, very uh, bare bones, very basic uh, a wash service. Castile Thank soap, you. no, no perfumes or dyes. Yes, quite, quite. Uh, and uh, well, if you if you'd like to just leave it at the bar and and head on up to your room, uh, you you should be ready to go. I'll I'll put it here on the floor. I don't want to get dried mud on your bar. That's all right. Uh, I I wouldn't have minded. There's there's really not. <clears throat> Not much in the way of, of cleaning that the bar needs ever. It would have really broken up I mean, the monotony, uh, but that's okay. I'll, I'll sweep I, I, instead. That's fine. I can put it on the bar, and he picks it up and, like, leaves a bunch of crumbs of dirt on the floor and then puts it on the bar. Well, we'll have that ready for you in the morning. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, all right. And I'm going to head toward the baths and, like, call back and say, Watch your step, uh, Don't step on anybody. <laughs> You too. Yes. Um. Let's see. And Barkeep looks out the <clears throat> at the far window and says, "Yes, the sun is just starting to set." Uh. Well, you said a night tour. Um. In perhaps uh. Twenty minutes, a half hour, we can we can set you out. Yes, that would be lovely. In the in the meantime, would you like uh, refreshments or a drink or? Or any yes, such? I will take your strongest, and I'll just set the bar and open up a book. My strongest, just yes. whatever. Okay. Just whatever. All right, and and I hesitate to ask for you. For... <laughs> um, I probably start talking away while he's pouring Kendra's drink, and I'm just gonna slap Kendra's drink. Poison. <laughs> oh, ah. we have to talk about this. No, no, it's all it's all right, Vod. I saw this one coming. That was water. I haven't poured your real drink yet. It's okay. Oh. That's why. The water. I knew it. I'll take a water, please. <clears throat> certainly, certainly. And uh, still or, or sparkling? Uh, shaken up so it gives the effect of sparkling, <laughs> but it isn't completely carbonated. Just oh, sure. Shaken. Yes, yes. Uh. He, he takes a, a cocktail shaker uh, and puts some ice in it, puts some water in it, and shakes it and, and strains it into a into a martini glass for you and, and slides it forward. Your water. Uh, and then, having set you up, he turns uh, and rummages around under the counter for a little, little while and pulls on some shoulder-length leather gloves uh, and a leather apron and flips it over his head and, and ties it in place behind him. Uh, and pulls out a uh, a rebreather that he straps onto his face, uh, and then grabs a pair of tongs and walks down to the end of the bar uh, and reaches down into a hole that actually goes into the ground with the tongs and pulls up a stone cylinder that he then sets on the bar. He puts the tongs down, very gingerly unscrews it, and sets it on its top, and then takes this this stone container. Uh, and pours into a, a rocks glass a frothing, roiling, pink, fizzing liquid 
pours about a single measure uh, and sets it down very gingerly on the bar, replaces the lid, takes the tongs, puts it back in, and picks it up and walks this drink at arm's length over to you. Vod, as requested, my strongest. I... You know what? Can we push the jet skis to tomorrow? Because I feel like if I drink this and then go jet skiing, I will die. And Pearl will be right, and I cannot live with that fact. <laughs> the bar barkeep laughs. It's, uh, certainly tomorrow night we can we can jet ski. I'll I'll pencil you in for for tomorrow night for the jet ski tour. Uh, it'll it'll Excellent. help get the uh, the to be perfectly honest, the lake monster doesn't entirely enjoy such short notice, but. Uh, Giving an extra yeah. night of, of warning uh, for the appointment will be will be much appreciated. Excellent, I say as I just like I'm not even looking at anyone. I'm toasting like just um, looking upwards and then downwards and then I throw it back. All right, give me a Constitution saving throw. All right. <laughs> no, you uh, you it burns as it fizzes down your your throats uh, and lands, and you can feel it splash into your stomach. Uh, and first there's a flash of heat out from, from the center of you, out to your fingertips and the tips of your toes and out the top of your head. Uh, and it's followed by a crawling chill. Uh, and you are... Make also for me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 15. Uh, you are, you get the spins, uh, you're incredibly nauseous, and you hear in your head uh, a voice that says, you're not the usual sort that drinks this. Who are you? I immediately just grab over to next to me, which I assume is Pearl. <laughs> and I um, pull her close to me as I just stare into the mirror behind the bar. What do you want? Is it time? You are in great danger. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at Pearl. I know. We need to get out of here. No, wait. Something is communicating with me. What has put you in the same room as my liqueur? I look to Pearl. <laughs> and then I look back to the mirror. I don't know if you can see me, but I look to my to this woman next to me, Pearl, because probably her and I met and I ran into my old friend, not even a friend, an interesting project I was working on, Cathar. <laughs> it's been a long as, day. As you look at yourself in the mirror, make me a perception check. <clears throat> Ooh, 18. You, being a vain person, have mm -hmm. an extremely concrete idea as to what your eyes look like. Which is why it is fairly frightening for you making eye contact with your own reflection to realize that, replaced by the, the elven soft hues of your, your eyes, there are red serpentine split pupil eyes staring out of your sockets. And with that, we are going to wrap for the evening. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everyone. We greatly appreciate your presence here and hope to see you all next week. That was Same an amazing time. first start, Kyle. Thank channel. you. You're yeah, so very time. welcome. Good night, everybody. <laughs>